Hello everybody, and welcome along to Huey Kind. Unlike you've ever seen it before, maybe. <laughs> Depending on how long you've been around, I haven't tried this challenge in a very, 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 very long time. Since I think maybe around the first month of the game's release, this is the Humankind Aesthet Only Challenge, or the Influencer Challenge, if you're focusing on the yield itself, which is of course this purple star up in the top right corner of the screen, Influence. In this game I'm going to play Influences only. I'm playing in a randomly generated map with, as you can see, a full roster of players. The full 10. We've got subscriber AIs and likely actual quote-unquote influencer personas as well. Uh, what else do you need to know about the world? Not too much. Everything is mostly randomized, like I say, in terms of... Um, World shape, I have no idea. World size, obviously it's to fit team players. Uh, resources are abundant, of course. And I also have a couple of modded cultures in a, uh, a couple of the eras earlier in the game, such as the medieval era, where there are fewer options to choose from. I just jumped into the mod screen, I saw the first four aesthetic cultures that I could see, and uh, added them into this game. So, we also have that to look forward to. They are in the YouTube description if you'd like to uh, know exactly which ones I'm playing with. Other than that, I think that's all of my hellos and welcomes, except to say a very warm hello and welcome to everybody who's already tuning in. I see Huck, I see John, I see Carl, I see obviously the Forex Gamer, who just died in their CK3 game as the Byzantine Empire. Yikes. Redacted, my friend and rival and friend and rival. <laughs> Rutra as well. We're playing against TikTokers. Let's let's roleplay against TikTokers. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course we're live on Twitch as well. Thank you to everybody who's joining in on Twitch too. I appreciate it. Dread. Where's the poll? I got you, friend. In fact, I think I just added one as you asked. <laughs> How's that for timing? Uh, not sure how long today's stream will be, but totally happy for this to be a full session. So strap in, because we could be in for a wild ride. Let's see how we go. Boom. Right, early bird introductions out of the way. Let's roll into this aesthetic only humankind, of course, I should note, max difficulty challenge. We're playing on max difficulty. And it's been a hot minute, I feel like, since I've really sweated on max difficulty single player in humankind. Of course, we had our multiplayer session just recently as well. We'll talk more on that in a minute. Uh, I know that there's food to my left. I can get there in two turns. I can get to the food to my right in two turns. Or I could jump onto this river. I kind of feel like jumping onto the river is a good idea. Let me move to high ground first. Didn't see much. <laughs> okay. Uh... If I go onto this river, can I sail along it next turn? Part of me feels like I can't because of this terrain looks too difficult to navigate. Uh, let's, if in doubt, zoom out. Okay, so we're right at the top of a of a relatively big world. That makes me incentivize to move south. I guess I'll move over. Oh my god, he did. I'll move on to this freshwater harvest and take 15 food with me. Brilliant. Um, now I'm left in a bit of a tricky call. Do I want to move north and take the guaranteed safe play of this food? Or do I risk it for the biscuit and move the way that I actually should move, which is south? Noting that I haven't seen a particularly good start anywhere here, except for some horses. I'm going to go and get this unit. <laughs> Damn it. I was going to say something else, but no. I think I have to get this unit. And maybe if this one can make it back to the river, it can't. Okay. Then we'll just send that one off that way and bring this one back to where that one left. <laughs> It'll be like nothing ever happened. Very smooth. Smooth as my cup of instant coffee that I've got alongside me this morning to help ensure that my brain is working properly so that we can actually start this game properly. Hey, Alec, nice to see you finally catching a stream too. <laughs> Busy with work? Working hard or hardly working? Hopefully both. I like to mix the two together. The 300 IQ play. Uh, we're sh shooting for 3,000. Uh, in our first era, it will be between Joe and the Olmecs, of course, our decision point. So please do also place your votes on that front. I would love to hear it, see it, feel it. So far, it's a relatively close vote between the two. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Kia ora, Pete. Nice to see you here too, friend. Um, I'm going to grab this and get three science. Eh, okay. Could, could be better, could be worse. Let's move back this way. 
and then send this unit downstream. See what we can find. Or rather upstream, as it were. Maybe I just claim this territory because it's pretty good. It's got a horse. Sure. A very fast and early claim. I'd like to have my standard two claims done before the end of this uh, wonderful era that is the Neolithic era. Let's move along the top and... Ah, uh, that is really unfortunate that I couldn't quite end my turn on this layer liar. However... <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Don't like really that. I don't really like that either. However, that river is ending there. I should have gone that way to get that science. We might have to backtrack for it now. The first a series of misplays, but day. sort of and a new some of those really unhelpable, unhelpable, but also impossible to change, really, because it's entirely up to the RNG of the early game. This looks like a pretty good territory for Joe. I note that this one would be okay too. We've managed to get at least a double mountain, if not a triple, actually, if I squeeze one in there. Interesting. Oh my goodness, coffee never tasted so good. Whew! Uh, okay, I kind of do want to pillage this lair, but also I want to keep exploring. I see we've bumped into our first border already. Which is a huge yikes. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe not the end of the world. Let's see. There could be loads of land this way. They could be pinned into a little corner. I don't know if they are. And I also don't know if I want to waste early influence on grabbing a... Okay, well, I'm accidentally fighting a mammoth. So, <laughs> let it be. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to need the high ground. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. 2312. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Hopefully this just winds up. It did. Okay, well that was a pretty close shave. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Can't quite make it back there, but I'll move on. Seeing as we need to find some juicy territories with loads of luxuries, and I just haven't found them. I could be looking to re-roll. Maybe. If this looks really bad. Just because, of course, I don't want to waste the whole game. On a dreadful start. <laughs> Looks like trouble in the unknown paradise over to my right. I might try and close in on them. How's the Elden Ring decision at the moment? Tilting. Octopus. It's tilting in favor of keeping it, actually. Yeah, I had a pretty good feedback for the most part. It seemed like the people who watched the stream really enjoyed it. It seemed like the people who... Uh, it seemed like the people who voted really wanted to see the stream. I really enjoyed it. Like, stupidly so. Um, but also, of course, to, to, to be fair, there were people who commented on the other side. What are you doing? This is a strategy channel. This is not the experience I signed up for. Uh, this is not what I pay you for. That kind of thing. Naturally to be expected. Uh, and then what were the other... Oh, and then sort of the, the on... The, the non-people metrics were... Good. G good. Not like write home about it to your mum, but good enough that YouTube didn't appear to punish me too hard. <laughs> Not too hard. Or at least the level of punishment was, was okay and tolerable. Put it that way, octopus. Um, thank you for asking, because I wanted to talk about that. Might need a re-roll emote at some point. Oh my god, yes, let's um, yes, great idea. Any ideas for its design, King of Toto? I'm listening. <laughs> a reroll emote is uh, a go-to. And I think actually it could, could be a go-to for this playthrough. If we get to around turn 10 and, and things are still looking... Uh, then I'll reroll. Usually. Turn 10 is a good point, I think. A huge map. It's got to be said. 
Uh, and getting the horses on the start is quite good. But probably starting this close to someone else, like, this start isn't worth saving that much. So what I'll do is uh, exit to the main menu. I'll also, that'll also give me a chance to show you the cultures that I'm playing with. Uh, where are we? Here they are. So maybe actually if I put a mar stream marker here, we can call all of this the early bird preamble and begin now. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Bada bing, bada bang, bada. Boom. Hello everybody and welcome. These are the four cultures that I have enabled for this game. Georgia, the Haiyan Japanese, the industrial era Texans, and the Song... Songdi? The, <laughs> the Song Dynasty. Great. Uh, just four aesthetic cultures that I found on the mod store. They were on the, the very front page of the, this browse mod section. So I thought I'll add them into this game. And this is what the game looks like. These were the players who were lucky enough to spawn themselves in the game. I guess I'll random them, roll them again. Otherwise, normal pace, relatively randomized settings, and humankind difficulty. Here are the players I'm playing against. I think there were a couple of subscriber ones in there, and also a couple of influencer ones. The name of this challenge, of course, if you're just tuning in or watching the VOD after the fact, is influencer only. So I have a heavy focus, indeed a prerequisite, a requirement, you could say, uh, to play the aesthetic cultures in the game. In the first era, of course, we're deciding between the Olmecs and Joe. Some of the eras, I believe the two that follow, have relatively few cultures. Uh, that's why I've modded in some into the mid-game. I think we've probably missed the classical era, though. I'm not sure. I, actually, I feel like maybe one of those modded cultures is a classical era one. Either way, I've added in a few modded ones just to pl plump it out a little bit. Just to plump it out a little bit. Uh, thank you very much, everybody who's joined me so far. Let's hope that the start is a little better than that early bird last one. I'm just going to beeline straight for the science because I see it. Uh, again, I've spawned right at the top of a massive map, which is, I was going to say unfortunate because... Uh, of the fact that I spawn in the tundra with with bad tiles. However, could actually also be a good thing if it's a largely sort of Pangea or land-based map, because then we'll at least guarantee that we have some ocean, some coastal tiles. It looks to me, though, seeing this open up, uh, that I'm just completely wrong about that. That is not at all the case for this world. I did note there was some extra science buried up that way. Looks like we've got copper and two other strategic, so this isn't a god-awful start. If I can get ten food out of that, I'll absolutely waste another turn moving back this way. If it's five, it stuffed me. It was five. Stuffed me like a turkey on Thanksgiving. Okay. It's teasing me again. My god. <laughs> okay. Wild berries. Done. Plus two food on city or outpost. Consider it done. Unit with loads of movement on your bike. <laughs> Off it goes. Dice for the next member's emote. The re-roll. Re-roll with the dice. Yeah, it's hard to put text on them because it compresses it so tightly that really, I, like I love the coup emoji, but even that gets compressed a bit too much. So it, it is best if it can be some sort of picture or symbol like that. So maybe some dice would be a good idea. And holy moly, we're already at 21 likes on the YouTube side of things amazing thank you everybody for getting in hard and fast like that i saw a couple of at jumbo pixels totally be okay with one day a week for non-strategy games if i'm in the mood yeah i i like that idea i like that idea I, and i have to be careful of course not to offend or off or like put off most people uh the last thing i want is for, for people to be like oh so this isn't a strategy channel anymore well that's it. I'm taking my things and, and moving elsewhere. See you later, chump. Uh, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to come across like that because, of course, that's not my intention either. It's it's not the truth. So it would be unfortunate to miscommunicate it. But, yeah, I think maybe one day a week uh, or, you know, whenever I put up a poll, if it's the option that gets voted for, it's the option that I play. If it's not the option that gets voted for, I don't. I don't poll for every stream. So that could also align well with your idea, Octopus, in the chat of playing something a bit different, maybe on average once a week. Uh, of course, some weeks could be more, some weeks could be less, right? That's the beauty of it. Hopefully being a little flexible. <laughs> Hopefully a little flexible. 
Uh, either way, I sort of feel like I'm just bumming around up here in a forest and not really achieving a whole lot. Uh, although lots of food is appearing behind me. These nuts, for example. Ten food. Nice. Let's try and cut through the forests though. Find some more science. Brilliant. I'm tempted with this unit to march back up this way because I know that more stuff will have appeared. Um, but maybe I want to consider where to place an outpost because I have the influence to do it. There's a mountain here so we can gear up for a reasonable-ish Joe start. Uh, let me grab the science. We got three out of it. That's pretty decent. I need to get vision of what's in here, really. Okay. Okay, if this is the extra unit, yes it is. Good. <laughs> Good! What we'll do is, I think, shoot for the high ground. Hallelujah, somebody left their science here. Boom. Maybe a fast move. There are some horses next door. Okay. Let's check. Someone's taken the Egyptians, but no one else has been taken yet. Could go for the fast move instead of the slow grind. Here's storytellers from my legacy trait. Always the right move. And if I knew what was on the other side of this, I'd probably settle this down right here. For the 514. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Let's get inventing. Let's get exploring. And remind me about that later because there's more food to be taken. More sanctuaries to be pillaged. Maybe even a deer to chomp. Yeah, this looks good. Let's, uh, insta-resolve, because I can get away with it. Just. And pillage this. That means that that unit will get one extra. Or that army will get one extra unit, I should say. Uh, and it looks like down here we're gonna try and sweep through. This deer will block me, almost certainly. So, let's pump out the other side. Here's a spot for a double mountain. Double mountain? <laughs> Amazing. 213 though, jeez, that is nothing to write home about. The 216 could be settled on instead. I could then put the Joe school there. Alternatively, I just say, actually, 213's fine. Who cares? Place it down now. Let's get this bad boy moving. I say, yes! <laughs> He's a madman! Uh, no, but if I get this bad boy moving and then I attach this territory into here, we can maybe, maybe get a double down here? No, we can't. Actually, that's a lie. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. I enjoyed the Humankind video I put out late last night this morning. I'm glad you like that, Pete. Yeah, I, I, um, I wonder how many, I'm, I wonder how much interest there is in that kind of guide content these days. I think there's always interest in the new viewer, the, the, the newer find or to humankind. The very veteran viewers, maybe you've heard maybe three out of five of those tips. The average player, maybe you've heard two or three, but you didn't remember them. I figured it struck a good balance between being, uh, interesting enough that new sort of beginner players to humankind would value it, but also a player like you or I might find value in it too. Oh, glad that you enjoyed it. Not the worst new Elden Ring player I've seen. <laughs> That's good. No rivers? Oh jeez. You are right actually. A dice with a recycle sign on one face. Hey. Recycle. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Brilliant. Love it. Yeah, that's a good way to symbolize re-rolling as well, isn't it? <laughs> Recovering some value out of those materials. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Let's hunt that deer. Let's move through. The lack of rivers is is a bit shite. I could go for one more reroll if I wanted to. Or maybe just keep exploring. We do have a little bit of time. Let's try and get a better idea of what this looks like. Mount Kilimanjaro. Could... and another mountain? <laughs> Jeez. These guys love their mountains, no? Wow. We could keep this. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> the turtle. Oh, the turtle. <laughs> that uppercut stab, though. <laughs> Yeesh! Um, I mean, this is a free hunt. I don't know if I want to take it, though. Could move through. Uh, maybe just reveal a bit more of this fog. Oh, two birds with one stone. Might manually fight this one. Oh my... Is this thing not even going to come and fight me? Yikes. I was trying to bait it to the high ground, but I think I should have just gone in. Either way, it didn't matter. Hoovered up a little bit more influence. Good. Probably won't go for the two birds. <laughs> One stone move there. By building an outpost, claiming territory... Could claim Mount Vilnius. Let's have a look-see. See what it's got. The yields here are... It's gotta be said. Really bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Um... Yep, 16 food up there. That's a bit fun, isn't it? Uh, three production. It'll never get built with three production. Seven, four, maybe? <sighs> eh. I do... I should probably just settle on the other side of it, actually. So let's can that. Let's move up this way. Fight this... This... That deer deer. If I'm going to keep this, we're going to have to move up there. Insta resolve, insta success. Likewise, we'd probably move this way. Sure. Get rid of that. I'm not mad at this. Even though there are no rivers. It's not the worst one ever. It's got horses. It's got copper. It's definitely not abundant with luxuries. I mean, <laughs> everybody can see that. I found but one. Um, but it could work. What do you think? Let me know. If you could just type it in, re-roll or no re-roll, I'll just quickly gauge the first three few chats. Hey, Gareth, nice to see you as well. I do have the continent all to myself. Another good point. I picked it up quicker than Do Dr. Disrespect, I'm told. <laughs> hey, that's good. I only had one hour and 40, 40, 45 minutes, of course, so that I could still choose to refund it if I want. But I don't think, I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, speaking of keep it, seeing the first chat come through, Pete believes this is a keepable, playable start. There's a foreign border to my south. That makes things... Uh, interesting, to say the least. I need to snag those horses if I'm going to want any any kind of success... Kind of? Any kind of successful run out of this. Um, let's move back up here to the great magical food lands and hope that someone's pumped some extra food out there. You there can grab these nuts. Do we have five extra food between us? Yes, we do. But I think I'll... Uh, actually, no, it looks like we've reached the end of this land. So, let me merge these guys together. There's now three of them. Uh, where are they going to settle? Probably somewhere with loads of food. <laughs> maybe up here-ish. Yeah, maybe up here-ish. No, re-roll. 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 What's my score compared to the others? Uh, Dread, I mean, it's important to note that score is a little misleading at this early stage because it's just about who can get to their stars first, and the stars do not reflect the quality of a start. Um, so in general, looking at the fame score at this point is sort of a waste of time. Um, it's not awful. Let's call this option one, right? Option one. Save it to the cloud. What I'll then do is quit to main menu and give myself one more option, okay? One more time, and then we can say, was option one better than option two? Randomize, keep all the rest of the settings the same, uh, 
and then let's see if option two is better or not. And that way, when I get to turn 14 in this option, or before, if we think it's just a clear-cut, obvious call, I can choose. Do I want option one or option two? Joe, a D-tier? Do we have a cannon to fire A.M. Hofmeister out of here, or... Uh, anybody want to do that for me, or shall I do it myself? Removes mod privileges. Our universe contains infinite stories. <laughs> Removes from Discord. Most of which are about rocks and ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Okay, let's see if option two is going to be any better than option one. Initial roll suggests that this world looks way smaller. No? Maybe just my perspective of it is much different. Let's have a look. Let's move inland, for starters. Without the forests to hold me back, I can get a nice, fast, early run. And we're just going to run straight into the middle. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. See what we can find. A uh, little bit of food behind me. The question is, do I want to waste my movement bouncing back for... I think the answer is no. Look at that aggressive settle there. <laughs> Hello, beastie. Woo! Okay, so they've taken the horses. Good to know. I think I might want to move this way. Maybe. And take this. To get this option off the ground. There's a 10 10. I'll grab it. It's a double saffron start, squeezing up against a pretty aggressive opponent. Let's grab the extra person. I'll play through this one slightly quicker than last. Um, oh my god. <laughs> I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Yeah, get me out of there. We'll retreat. We'll use that retreat maybe to our advantage. Try and squeeze them in, and it looks like. This territory here is going to be the one to squeeze, even though there's food to north. Let's end turn and move fast Delicious. onto that food. These nuts. Nice. Be if you it first. Get this unit out of here as well. Down and around, maybe. Onto the food. I don't know. They're going to be my priority number one, though, that's for sure. Or maybe this unit is. I'm going to have to move them quickly. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking I'll move down toward this river, because this will be a better settle. However, I could move to the food and grab the extra unit next turn. Maybe I do that instead, just because we're right on the border of other players. Okay. Nice. Quickly run away from this guy. Oh my god, I think I used all of my movement because he was right there. Run! <laughs> if we can quickly run to this food, it's D's nuts, we'll get 10 out of it. We'll then move to that one next turn. Uh, okay, send the extra unit because it's free anyway over there and continue to grab food these nuts do i want to scare off that player holy moly that player is strong yikes i think i want to run away from that player actually uh or maybe to the north let's run this dude to the north go you beautiful you uh let's get bountiful on whist street It'll give it plus five extra food, help grow early population really fast. Uh, and you are going to bounce down onto this river and likely settle in here for a really great Joe territory, actually. It's got to be said. Uh, okay, this is a yikes. I failed to move this unit and now we're trapped by the looks on low ground. Nowhere to move. My only option, I feel, is to sort of hunker in place. Could try and run into the, the open, give up my swag. It has to be done, I think. Get up onto that high ground. Yikes. It's a draw. It's all a bit hectic, really. To be honest, it's all a bit hectic. Let's beeline down toward that food. Jump this unit here. We're looking to grab this outpost. <laughs> we don't have the influence to do it. Uh, so I'll jump back onto the river and we'll try and hunt down some science. I was too slow to move this unit and now I'm facing the ultimate conquerquence. Potentially my demise. However, a defended high ground move might be enough to survive. Ugh! Maybe a draw? It was a draw. Nobody came out of that on top. Yikes. The lack of influence is, some say, disgusting. Others say, revolting. 
Um, hunting this mammoth is actually probably better than going for this science thing. So, what I'm going to do instead is do that, I think. Waste all of my movement. Uh, but if we can destroy this, we can get 20 influence out of it. And because we've got the high ground and it's down on a river, I think we destroy it pretty easily. In fact, wholeheartedly, I probably could have even just done it with one unit and called it a day. The downside with hunting mammoths and getting free units is the free units don't have movement after you hunt them. It's a bit odd. Oh my god, I accidentally misclicked and sent them all over. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. That was obviously not the right play. However, we do have enough influence now to claim this. So I'll send this unit back this way to somewhere around here. 714. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, this time, very careful to separate these units out. <laughs> Put one of them onto the river, and then we really need someone back exploring up to the north. Like, yesterday's day before yesterday, we needed somebody back exploring up to the north. Let's send this unit to get that food, this unit to get that science. We're on turn 14, so this is our decision point. What do you think? What do you think? And it's the Egyptians up there. This might be a fun early war game. The lack of influence <laughs> is revolting. <laughs> Two super close opponents. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the Egyptian squeeze right on our border. They're pegged right into ne next to someone else as well. You are dead right. Um, very fast. Very fast. Settle by them too. Go on the grind. Get the extra food. And then snag back this way and grab these wild berries. I've got my two outposts nearly down. Next turn they'll both be down. So that would be my time to move, probably. Can we get an extra... Okay, there's my storytellers as well. So we just got that in the nick of time. This, I think, is a better start in terms of yield. Absolutely a better start in terms of yield. What do we think? We can flex those mighty old Mickey warriors. <laughs> What's my score compared to the others? Now, uh, this time, lower. So, but someone else has already moved through, got their first star. So in the other game, we were the same score as them in the same era. So they got less score this game before they moved through, probably. Um, I'm not worried about the fame score at all. I'm much more interested in the quality of the start itself. Hmm. I lean towards this one. I reckon we go with option two. Joe in this one might be crap. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely not here. That's the best Joe spot. Uh, finding a second Joe spot could be more difficult if some mountains don't start appearing. That is true. Uh, although, actually... Here's some... Memphis has got loads. All of my neighbours seem to have loads. Who's this player? The Harapans. Okay. I think maybe if I give it one more turn... A peek for one more turn. Because grabbing a few of these outposts is kind of important. No. So much so, actually, I think I might send reinforcements... To the north. <laughs> By that I mean a scout, obviously. Brilliant. And there's some more borders down that way. This is a this is a super cramped start. Like jeez. <laughs> it's tight, that's for sure. Point. 
think I'll just keep hooning up all this food. Um, and probably move through to the next era and start to get these cities online now, I think. What do we reckon? I would really like a bigger award for the Hunter Stars. Yeah. The Hunter Stars are fairly underutilized, really, aren't they? Like, I, I don't even bother going for them. They're not worth my time. This one seems more interesting. Could really go wrong, though. Okay, it seems like there's general support for this one. Let's play this one. Need to grow fast in this one. Okay, alright. Seems like there's general support for this one. It's certainly going to be a more of a <laughs> risky experience. You're right, I'll definitely give you that. So, let's say that this is the one to go for. Thank you to the now 30-something people who have tuned in and watched it on YouTube alone. We're around 50 viewers in total today, I think, so far. So good. Um, and later, as I said at the start, happy to sort of take your lead and see how long this one wants to go for. Um, okay, let's do this one. All right. In that case, I'm choosing a culture. The Olmecs have been taken. Joe still exists. And in my mind, the Bantu are an influence culture. That'd actually be a, a, not a terrible one for this playthrough. But of course, it has to be an ace state. And Joe with 51% to 49. An incredibly close vote. Jeepers. <laughs> that is amazing. By the power of democracy, let it be. Uh, how did we go on the Twitch poll? Let me have a look-see here. Also, Joe won with 67% to 33. Okay, so, on both platforms, with no democratic intervention whatsoever, it seems to me that Joe is going to be the winner as we move through into the ancient era. So, Joe. Plus two stability on district, really good moving forward. We then have the Confucian School, of course, providing stability and a wonderful amount of science, if we can get some mountains around it. And then we have a unique that I'm left about as puzzled as my avatar feels, I think, on the unique front. Will I be able to build it in time for it to be useful? Almost certainly not. But we'll see. <laughs> the gang's all here to the north. Down south, I've basically just said, who cares? Uh, one more little s encampment, little science grab, and then we'll jump onto the river. And boom, end this turn. Okay. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. Qdries, subscribed with Prime. Huh. Thank you very much. I thought I heard a little ding over on the Twitch thing. <laughs> Thanks for using your Twitch Prime subscription, friend. Super appreciate it. Markets. Perhaps you don't really need to focus on markets when you have deep philosophers oh. and dangerous. Oh, giants. okay, there we go. All right, so we have the Harapan capital there. We have my two, probably one here. Let's see. So this one's got two people living in it already. This one has no one. It kind of makes sense then to make this one the first, the first, the first, the first. <laughs> But, I prefer this one because we can get a really good Confucian school. And I kind of feel like maybe I spend all of my early influence to attach this up. This will grab me with, this will grab me two extra dudes. And we can just get a strong central city started relatively quickly. Then build up the resources on it. I don't know if that was the right play or not. The other thing that I know is that I probably want this territory. So, let me send a good amount of dudes there. I also probably, of course, want this one and the one to its south. Yikes. And I probably want to settle this one around, literally right around here. So, let's just flex our might. <laughs> That is not a flex at all, but we're gonna try. And then what do we need for this place? Probably calendar first, I think. Because we've got a whole load of saffron with my name on it. Right. Wasted all of my movement to stand on that river, but to be fair, it's actually a fairly profitable one if I can take it. Here's red player. Love that symbol. It's La Katrina of the Nubians. Great. 
Really great. Let's trade. You've got nothing. Okay, good. And we've also, of course, met the Harapans. It's default AI Persona 4. None other than... <laughs> Let's check. They've refused my luxuries trade. Why? Why? Stupid. Okay. <laughs> well, two can play at that game. You want to fight? Yeah, get out of here. This land is mine. I'm going to try and keep these territories safe so that I can expand on them relatively quickly. Probably should have got the improvement that provides uh, me with some extra influence in that case. Feeling like pushing up... I'm pushing... No. How does it go? Sailing up Shite Creek without a paddle here a little bit. Maybe... Oh, just not enough to get that done any faster. Yikes. I wonder if I can do that in a turn with everybody on industry. No. Also not possible. Let's go for the Confucian School first. This unit will have to retreat, and then these two will run in, the cleanup crew, and manually fight this one. Good. Just gonna take that flag while I'm at it. Ha! And then defend, try and surround this unit, I guess. Overwhelm it with numbers. And defend in place. Yeah, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Actually, we can just take it down. Clear it out of the way. At least secure this territory because it's a good second Joe one. Looks like they've taken this one off me. Uh, okay, maybe in that case I move to the south. I'm going to continue to try and grab this one first, though. Can we... Okay, the Egyptians would like to trade with us. We'll accept that with Angel Spike VG. Welcome in, friend. Uh... <laughs> And hopefully, we'll keep them on side long enough that they won't also declare war on me and just turn this run to absolute garbage. A non-aggression pack from the Nubians is a nice snag as well. I'll take that. The Assyrians. The fact that they have horses and siege engines. Oh, leave me alone! That seems Minus 50% create outpost right cost. Not to mention Puts course. it at... 62. So I should probably still get... Plus 5 influence on the main plaza. This is going to be a few turns away. Let's... Whoa, this is going to be tough. You would think that the high ground stab would be the way to go here, but... Or the forested stab, but it's just not enough. This promoted scout is just going to run absolute rings around me here. Yikes. I'm down onto my last legs. Pinned in to Hao Jing. Gonna have to quickly flee to the south. And hope that we have a reasonable backup plan down here. There is at least loads of space down here. Something to be thankful for. I'll leave this unit. The Assyrians would like to trade luxury, so we've got them on side. I feel like I'm absolutely on the back foot right now. Yeah, well and truly on the back foot. Uh, okay, they're closing in. We're gonna retreat to save this unit's life. <gasps> completely, completely give up on trying to settle that Northern Territory, I think. I think that's a waste of time right now. Hmm. What do we have? Ebony for plus three industry on the main plaza. Dies for plus five industry per die. So they're a flat boost to industry. I think the saffron relies on farmer's quarters. So maybe a slightly slower improve. I think the die and the ebony should be first so i'm gonna focus on improving the three of them pottery workshop can we get you in a turn still no so we'll keep going on food uh let's try and build <laughs> something to defend myself with maybe 
Maybe upgrade my scouts too. Take a leaf out of their book. Just go through and get all of the base technologies. Build up that solid base. Oh my god. Uh, I think we can win this, actually. They'll, they'll have to come down and take the flag. Like so. And because they're weak, we should just beat them. Yeah, nice. I mean, not nice that I'm being fought on all sides. But sure, nice. I mean, this unit is literally in my capital. <laughs> Please leave, sir. Please. You're blocking my expansion as well. I'm gonna have to now bounce this unit back this way. Have a look at the founding myth civic. Grab the plus five influence on main plaza. Let's keep it simple. We've been here. It's our place. Whoa, this is tough. For an influencer only run, I feel really low on influence. <laughs> uh pinned in a corner up here. Gonna have to take this fight. Maybe maybe try and flee. Ugh. No, let's just stand our ground. Try and hold out the three rounds. Yeah, we did it. Nice. <laughs> I'm not sure why at this point. This poor unit. Run, you fool. No, they're gone. They're gone. Caught out. Unfortunate, but hopefully not the end of the world. Uh, you there. Please. Let's get claiming. Try and meet up with your friend. So that you have some sort of combined strength. I don't have enough money to pay to protection. We're going to just have to pay for adaption. Which sucks. Man, I feel like I'm having everything thrown against me today. Artisan's Quarter in 3 isn't terrible. Whew, at least I have science on my side. <laughs> let's get irrigation for free. Then let's get bronze working, fishing, and then revisit the rest. Irrigation, I'm hoping, will be a saving grace for some of these territories. <laughs> but I don't know, Chief. I don't know if it will. You are really just trying to stay alive at this point more than anything. Uh, it does look like there could be a better settle up this way. So... Oh, this unit is really rather annoying. <laughs> I think I'll go for the panic settle and place it down here. Just in case they try and steal it off me. The Nubians would like to trade everything. Of course they would. Uh, hopefully they'll pump some cash into my economy. To help me not be bankrupt anymore. And let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Down to the south. <laughs> Try and claim some more of this territory in a super cramped world. Bronze working unlocked at least. I have science on my side, that's something. This is almost frustratingly cramped actually at this point. Lucky, lucky alright. May need to build some early troops for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've been- I've, I've left people on full food for that very reason, and it's so that I have at least population uh, in my cities. Speaking of cities, uh, it would be nice if we had a second city. Um, but I think that expansion should still be priority numero uno. Could- could place down a panic outpost here? Let's run for the 15-4, hope that we don't get attacked on the way. Ah! Do I want to scare that person off? I think that I do. Ooh. Come on! Overwhelm them with numbers! Here we go. Right, let's get rid of that person. So that we have this. What is rightfully ours. They blocked my movement, but that's okay. Maybe I go for my unique. Grab the wheel. 
I no. That's just dumb. I don't have copper. I don't have <laughs> I don't have anything required to build it. In turn and quickly bounce and grab this. War's been declared on the Harapans and the Egyptians. <laughs> oh boy. Are my three population in Haojing going to be enough to defend? No. Looks like we might be going back to option one after all. How about that? What speed is this? This is normal speed. Kia ora, shorty. <laughs> this is normal speed. And this is... This is a disaster. Did somebody say option one? Although, look at the defense on those peasants. Hold the line, everybody. Hold the line. The horse can't get in. So I'm not afraid of it. These guys are attacking off a river. Hopelessly. Successful siege. Brilliant. Grab those dies. Trade luxuries with the barn too. <laughs> oh look, there's a horse up there. God, I'd love a horse. <laughs> I really would. Let's see if we can get toward that. How are we doing in Haojing? Hold. There's their peasant gone. They literally have nothing to attack with now. Nice. Successful siege. Can I get walls before these units arrive? No. No. Can't get a thing. Okay. Three peasants. Back at it again. Round two. <laughs> Thankfully, my opponent has bought horses. They've bought a ranged unit. That thing will need to die immediately. Uh, everything else will die probably on its own accord. So, let's... Step a unit out over the river and give this ranged bad boy a stab. Give it a double stab. Did I hear a triple stab? Go, you peasants, go. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, hmm. It might be a good idea to swap these ones over. And then just defend with these peasants let the warriors manually attack in and wear themselves down against it the archer is the only one that it's still worth jumping out at of course because it can fire at me and we've successfully i think defended from the second siege my god it's too good but not as good as dusk thank you dusk for supporting the stream Dusk and Dawn 2 with a 15 shekel super chat says, Can't really watch the stream today. Ellipsis. Have fun, everyone! <laughs> Thank you. I hope we're having fun. It seems like we are. Nice to see some more people tuning in as the stream rolls through as well. This game is making me anxious just watching players everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit hectic, isn't it? <laughs> Had to disappear for a minute to watch the new Obi Obi-Wan trailer. Ooh. Interesting. I'll have to watch that too. Peasant power, Pete. Pete's peasant power. And you know what? We don't even have walls here, really. These people are defending behind literally just stones. Uh, a non-aggression pact with the Assyrians, yes. I think we just take any deals that we can get while we are not doing very well in sixth place. I've got people <laughs> everywhere. It seems to me that the randomization of the map has randomized the map to be a pretty small size, uh, but I've forced it to have 10 players. It, it leads to crazy things happening. The Nubians have offered me an alliance. Uh, that feels good to me. That feels good. Let's get allies where we can. Look at all this free space! <laughs> I feel like, uh, I feel like this is my just desserts for my amazing spawn in the multiplayer game. I've just been spawned literally in the middle of everybody, and it appears, early intelligence suggests, that out this way, 
It's just free land as far as the eye can see. Yet the Nubians Ford settled me here on these horses. Gotta love that too, don't you? Jeez. Unbelievable. Okay, the Hittites would like a non-aggression pact. We're not afraid of Sigamore's Hittites, but we will take a non-aggression pact with them, of course. Uh, and then, quickly, if I could run away from this pink unit, run away from this unit, and maybe, just maybe, panic place an outpost around here somewhere, no? 78 influence. Next turn. Okay. Let's defend against the attacking warrior, which I have done, but only just... Um, and actually I don't even have a peasant left to move on to the flag. Thankfully it was enough. Uh, learning on housing could be the way to go because I can't afford the minus 50 gold. So let's go learning on housing. Double down on our science housing. Uh, jeez, how do I get extra units here very quickly? Maybe I need to build a warrior as a sort of a frontline defender. We can build a warrior in a turn and we'll grow in a turn so we'll replace the population like that that's probably a good idea and my best way to defend the only other way would be to attach up some territories that have populations in them it doesn't look like i have any of those okay so the mood for next turn is going to be to see if i can quickly hopefully snag this territory for the horses then we'll focus on building our second city i am just quickly going to take a break uh, grab myself a coffee refill. Nice to see a couple of new viewers and some latecomers coming in too, like you, RiseX. What's up? Pilu, just here as well. Just gonna take a quick break, then I'll do a recap, and we'll think about moving through to the next era. I'll catch you in a minute.
Thank you for your patience and bearing with me, everybody. Uh, to those of you who did. <laughs> okay. Um, I was reading the chat there while I was just sitting back down and making sure that my brain was in working order. Uh, and as per usual, I am Hofmeister. Yes, absolutely right. Perfect. Bang on. Thank you for answering those questions. Uh, yes. In a nutshell, the science osmosis events that are happening are happening because I, or my people, are following the culture. They're under the cultural influence of someone else. Let's have a look on the society screen and see if we can actually witness that playing out. Yeah, there it is. So here's my city, Haojing, right? My borders, likewise my territories. But you can see that I'm being influenced by uh, cultures all around me. <laughs> I do not have the influence spread at the moment pumping into these centers. As you can see, it is just coming from everywhere but me it's uh, uh not doing me any favors for my influence generation but providing me with a bit of science as a catch-up so sort of broadly how that's working maybe if we see another event i can describe it uh, in a little more detail i've just been clicking through them relatively quickly i suppose um should be due one soon i can also use my ability converting to joe soon though um I'm gonna get one of these to come up. Might just wait. Uh, well, this is a massive yikes. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, there is no population in this city and just one warrior. That's a freaking disaster, actually. I really need more food. I just don't know about that. I just don't know about that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in a, in a sec as well. Uh, real DYL. I'll talk a bit more about it in a sec. If we can get another osmosis event to come up. Uh, I'll absolutely do that. Oh, I hear a ding! It's devilish! Thank you, devilish, for the $1.99 super chat! Devilish said, kia ora, mate! Listening while I sitting ASL class. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Shout out to you sitting in class right now, devilish. I'll keep it down. I'll keep it down so the lecturer doesn't hear. Although I've just realized it could also be a digital class and you could be sitting at home in your pajamas with your feet up, eating a bag of, I don't know, carrot sticks or Doritos or whatever you eat. So, in which case, yes! <laughs> Thank you, devilish. That is very kind. Thank you for the $1.99. I appreciate it a lot. And also, uh, I think we just picked up a new uh, Twitch follower as well, didn't we? In Fighting Tico. Yes, we did. Thanks for following. Mate. Zoom class. Feet up, but no PJs. A good, a good mixture. A good mixture. A good choice, too. Nothing worse than being cooled on when you're in your pajamas. <laughs> How many opponents are we at war with? A great question. I think it's two. Um... We're at war with... Greetings from me and my people. Yeah, Memphis, so uh, the Black, Angel Spike VG, the Egyptians, and the Harapans, default AI Persona 4. Brilliant. Uh, so we are at war with this player. It surprises me that you wouldn't just come and take the city and destroy me here. I don't get that. It's not going to be long enough for me to sneak any walls in. It's not actually even going to be fast enough for me to grow. I could buy out this artisan's quarter, I guess. I'm not really sure what that achieves. It puts a district in. There. Uh, I have the influence to attach, but for some reason not to create my second city. That's cost is skyrocketed up to 160. The attach option could be used to provide extra population really fast. I think I have to do that. Next turn. <laughs> A 
the bright side, we can get a plus six science Joe district. So let's just do that and pretend like nothing bad is happening. No, I think I should get the walls. I think I should get the walls. Uh. What? <laughs> what is this madness? <laughs> what? May or may not be doing some serve on another screen. Oh, that really warms my heart. Hold on. I just... I need to see this. I need to see this. So, did they just propose a surrender before... Did I remove their war score that turn? Or did they propose a surrender? I'm genuinely confused. Did they... Was that a push for white peace? Are they going to give me a city because they declared a stupid war on me? I repelled their stupid invasion. Oh, okay, I've gone back too far. That's alright. I should just be able to play this out. Uh, as history played it. Um, I think what happens is, I repel this invasion, and then they, <laughs> they just surrender? But yeah, but they had so much war score. I don't understand that. I mean, obviously I'll take their surrender. That's fine. I... I'm not looking, actually, to push that any further than it needs to be pushed. Uh, and then I think here I built the warrior next, I believe. Yeah, because it took a turn. Although I seem to think we were growing in a turn, but that's okay. Uh, so I built the warrior next, and then did I move anybody? Yes. Yes, I need to get over here and panic place this outpost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should check my civics. Uh, did this happen in an alternate world? I can't remember if it did. Let's go. Either way, I think standing here is a good idea. Really? You're not even going to fight me? Okay. Have it your way. Trigger a fight for no reason. Oh. God's sake. <laughs> Try again. Does this person want to fight me? No. Again. Just a no reason fight. Uh. Oh, I see. So, we're actually in this territory right now. And if I were to panic place here, I would actually be changing the course of history. I would really prefer to take those horses. Really strongly prefer to take those horses. I'm gonna wait. There's my warrior. Everything seems to just be slightly slower here. <laughs> but I think that's okay. Uh... I don't think I'll do that attach again, so at least if we lose that territory, at least this cloud has had a silver lining. Uh, I think instead, I need food or boots on the ground. That district would provide five food. This would arguably be more beneficial, I think, maybe, to get some infrastructure. Let's go for the walls first, though. Maybe getting that artisan's quarter online, too. Position this unit here, behind the walls of Haojing, and now I guess I just wait and see if they try and surrender again. Let's see. <laughs> Loads of deals happening with, As with the Assyrians and trade deals and all sorts. Looks like this has played out properly, uh, as intended, <laughs> I should say. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. Grab this outpost again. There's my horses. And if I could get this one, I'll at least have five. And a reasonable grab with maybe one or two more spots to reach to if I can get there safely. Uh, which is going to be easier said than done. I think I'll buy that out and finish that this turn. The harbour is unlikely to provide any real value, so we'll leave that as it is. And Bob's your aunt, I think. Okay, they did do this again. Wow. What are they doing?
cool. So they are literally just trying to peace out early. I think I'll accept that. <laughs> and take some territories. And 580 bucks. Wow. What just happened? What just happened? <laughs> oh my god. That is so stupid. Unbelievably stupid. Wow. Wow. I can buy my walls in Haojing with that. Yes! Not only did you lose your dumb war, but you might have just sent mine into victory as well. Let me get a maker's quarter online. In Haojing. It's time to increase the size of this puppy. Uh, let's also start connecting these industrial improvements. Brilliant. Writing online. Love it. Haojing will hopefully start growing too. And then we'll really be away laughing. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that! Looks like I'm not going to get an osmosis event. Yeah, I see the ability. Good call, good call, good call. Okay, so I've got my peasant defending the front line. <laughs> yes, bully! <laughs> Hold! Seen the warrior down now. Wonder where the AI will run. Looks like nowhere. My entire game on Sunday was an osmosis event. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, served you well too, didn't it? Okay. This siege is again going to go very well. Um, so, yeah. So the osmosis events, which I uh, can't seem to get to come up for the life of me. But... They are things. They do exist. Um, are triggered by this society screen. You can see here my territories on the territorial map in blue, uh, which are these ones, do not or overlap very well with the territories under the control of other societies' influence. In fact, they do overlap very well with that, and that's entirely the problem. For example, my blue borders here have been overrun by the territory of my Nubian neighbor to the south. Likewise, this territory is under their control. If you click into it, you get a feel for just where that influence pressure is coming from, and what percentage control you have, and therefore how much influence is being generated for you. In this case, I'm receiving none because this territory is majority not under my control. You can see loads of other influences coming in, largely from the Nubians. What triggers this, you might ask? Well, it's a few things. It is how our societies overlap. So how my civics and the civics that I've selected, how they've swayed my society one way or another, and how those decisions overlap with the decisions of their empire and their civics. More importantly though, the way that you can have direct control over it is through diplomacy. It's through things like trade deals and trade routes. Here, for example, I have completely open borders with this player. We're in an alliance. So there's a free flow of loads of things between our empires. Now I've just picked up some trade routes with them as well. You could see those enacted in white. They will also have, over time, an impact on how easily things spread through our empire. Not just societal pressure, but also uh, religious pressure as well. It's something I could talk about a little bit later, actually. Um, I'm working it on a video at the moment that's sort of a humankind frequently asked questions, and this will be one of them. So useful for me as well to be thinking about it 
to hear about it from people smarter than me in chat um, and to hear that it's a thing that you are wondering as well because if you're wondering it chances are loads of other people are too so always always nice to know please do fire those questions away at any stage if anybody is thinking about them in chat let's jump back in here and go with plan defend next turn lol i have a proposal glorious glorious let it be so let there be buy some salt of our assyrian neighbor good for the both of us we'll trade with the hittites as well uh they don't have a lot to offer weird um and it is really weird that they gave me these territories even though i wasn't occupying them but i'd love to take them <laughs> we're close to victory at war with the egyptians as well and this battle may just push that over the edge ooga booga just be caveman, then you get all the osmosis events. <laughs> it's their influence income. It's their influence income. Now, that may scale with their population. It's important to note, right? So, it, it would be unfair to just say... That, it would be unfair to say that population has nothing to do with it. But it's their influence generation. Yeah. Yep. In the same way that faith spreads with faith generation, uh, theirs is spreading with their influence generation. And then that's being enabled more stronger and better and blah 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 by someone else. Now, there is actually a part two to this. Once you understand that it's about influence generation, it's about how influential you are over your neighbours, and you have a look at the society screen, there is something you can do. And it's actually very closely related to this run, so it's really good uh, to cover it. It is, of course, the aesthete culture and the aesthete affinity. Two things to note here. Firstly, the affinity bonus down the bottom, grace. Ideological proximity is always maxed out. What that means is that my pressure will be at max while I'm playing as an aesthete. So I should really have pressure and influence over my own territories so that I can be making the most of that, right? The next thing to note then is my affinity action, cultural blitz. This will help me get to that maximum point so that I can hold the line and hopefully then push out against others. I can spend money to promote patriotic works of art in specific territories that push back the foreign sphere of influence and generate me some influence in exchange for some gold. This ability has been buffed over time in humankind. Let's try it out. So you can see here, clearly I need to start building up my own influence so that I can start pushing it out. This territory is converting to my influence naturally, which is great, but this one is not under my control. So let me use my aesthetic ability on this territory here. I can also use it on ones that already have my control to just gen generate some more influence. I'm gonna use it on this one, spending 30 gold, to generate 30 influence and bam it is instantly whop flung that under <laughs> into my control and now of course my influence will spread more easily and more readily to neighboring territories because for example this territory now has two spots where potentially i can become influential and start spreading influence in the other key factor of course will be to start building up more cities as they act as great points for influence generation far more than anything else you can see here housing is providing itself at the moment through exploitations through uh infrastructural improvements and all sorts of things that you can see broken down over on the left hand side of the screen largely at the moment through civics and infrastructure but a little bit through population and the main plaza itself 17 influence and this is going to be your main source of influence generation in the early game especially hopefully that kind of makes sense Generate your influence through the things that you can see there. Allow it to spread more readily, perhaps, through deals or through becoming an AC culture and using that ability. And then that will give you ideological control and proximity over other people. While I was talking about that, devilish threw $5 into the YouTube super chat ring not to be overdone and said the cult of devilishism has transcended to the religion of cavemanism as we move from civilization to all of humankind. Very good. I'll be sure to get my religion established for you. <laughs> if I can. I mean, geez. It's, um... It's not going well for me because my food is so low. 
<sighs> we're losing this because, again, our ideological proximity is not very strong over the Egyptians. It's actually not a bad thing to lose, though. So I'm going to replace... Because for me, it's actually kind of a good deal. I mean, we're not going to be claiming a lot more territory, necessarily. But I am going to be looking to upgrade and attach things soon-ish. So, I consider that not the end of the world. Off we go. I'm going to try and hold this. Not going to succeed in holding this. Maybe I can hide in the woods. <laughs> Are we into the woods now? Quickly. Come on, you can do it. Okay, great. Oh, uh, really quick, one second. Um, I've just seen Morplovac. Really nice first time chat from you on Twitch. Thank you for following on Twitch as well. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Um, I think I think someone's at the door. <laughs> just be a sec. Okay. Keep up the great work. Love watching your content. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to try my damnedest to be keeping up the great work. And it's through support from people like you who uh, who help make that happen. So thanks very much. Um, first raid. <laughs> Nerf Joe Amplitude. Aesthetes too strong. You reckon, Aaron? I don't know. I kind of disagree. I think they should buff Joe to new heights. Every unjust war one provides plus 1,000 influence. No, but really, look at this. We've just won another war. Uh, unfortunately for this one against the Egyptians, I have nothing to bargain for. So we don't have the war score to force them to beat our vassal. Uh, so instead, we'll just, we'll just force that surrender. Cool. Okay. Two wars, two early unjust wars easily repelled. And, and my... <laughs> my neighbors are left really running away with their tail between their legs. Although it looks to me... Hmm? And you are here because... Wait, what happened? Weren't they black? I feel like I should fight this person while they have nothing in their cities. Yeah. Surely. Surely. Can I get, like, one more unit? Yes. Great. Okay. The, the terrible army of two? <laughs> Let's see. Surely I can just... They have a oh, I mean, they do have some units about. Be careful that your people don't but start I can get there in one turn. Let's try. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> this is dumb. Let me try this. Let me see if let me see if I can turn this right against them and really punish them for their stupidity. While they've got their backs turned, let me run into Memphis. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's too good. Okay, we're going to quickly sneak into Memphis. Well, they've got their pants down. Buy another warrior. Love it. Get some food out of these horses. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. Good. Influence. Looking good. Uh, I was going to say, I should build another city. But maybe I shouldn't if we're just going to take them all. Maybe I'll just keep uh, improving resources. Like these horses. <laughs> good. Okay. Uh, more dyes. Yep. More industry onto the city. Get loads of industry pumping out of this place. Building the Joe district, I think, is just helpful anyway. It doesn't hurt. It's not a bad district to have. It's positive stability. It's positive science. I'll build it anyway. Feeling homesick for New Zealand, so being able to listen to the jumbo accent is helpful. Oh, that's nice to hear, Nikita. <laughs> Being aesthetic with max ideological proximity also means that any war declared against an aesthetic will come with war score penalty each turn. There's an extra for expert tip, Johnny. Joe buff to use height. Oh, the new heights buff. <laughs> there it is. It's a mountain pun. Amazing. Amazing. Um, okay. I like to take these dies. So I'm going to position myself... To a place where I can do just that. We can snag that. We'll be literally splicing hop right down through the middle of the continent. Uh, what do we want to do about this Memphis situation? An enormous leap. Oh, get distracted by a cutscene. Oh, that was exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> the game just took the words right out of my mouth. It must have been while it was kissing me. Uh, okay. I don't know about this. High chance of good consequences if I spend 20 bucks. Also a high chance of good consequences if I lose 10 food, but build units really fast. I'm just going to spend 20 bucks. If in doubt, super chat 20 bucks at the problem. <laughs> Speaking of... In honor of your super chat, devilish, I will name at the very least the city after cavemanism. <laughs> In honor of your great gameplay too. Okay, Saffron isn't really helpful until I have food districts down. So let me build one. In the capital, sometime in the near. Uh, merge these units together. We've now got a strong army of three pumping down on the city of Thebes. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh my god, and here's a religion I spoke too soon. Let's get plus six faith on the main plaza and continue to ignore that. Organized warfare could be useful moving forward. So I'll grab that and let's quickly, if we can, march on Thebes. But actually it's the most difficult city in the world to march on. Boom. Assault. Uh, manual battle. Let's just quickly get in here and get this done, I think. Yep. Really good. Surround that unit, but we won't attack it. There's no need. The archer can plink away at it slowly, slowly, slowly. And then now, while it's a bit weaker, we might send all hands on deck. Oh, there he goes. That was D-E-C-K. By the way. <laughs> uh, and there we go. Okay. Thebes, down. Vulnerable opponent. Just absolutely taken advantage of his cultural blessing, which will nag for the move towards multiculturalism, I think. For the extra food on stolen cities. Very good. And the Hittites would like an alliance. Look how just absolutely enraged I was in that moment. Uh, we'll take it, though. Always a good idea to have a couple of friends. We'll buy the copper off them as well. Thanks, Hittites. They're our neighbor as well. So we can grow together and prosper together. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, 
So they got a whole lot of war support because it was an unjustified war. But now they're going to lose a whole load of it because I'm taking all of their cities without asking. <laughs> Although they're probably going to take Memphis back next turn, which is kind of annoying. We also need to make a decision on who we want to play in the next era. Now, we could transcend as Joe. That's an option. Uh, what other aesthete options do we have? We have the Morians. And that's it. Classical era is a bit of a lame one, I'll admit. Uh, I do have some modern cultures for the next ones, though. But, let's poll it nonetheless. Zero population, two cities, yeah. I guess just wiped out from previous wars, Pete. Just wiped out from previous wars, would be my guess. Uh, who will it be? This will be, no doubt, the most boring decision. <laughs> we can always transcend. Yeah, well, that's literally the only other option. So, let me give you a poll on both platforms. Uh, who? Classical who? My mistake for not modding in a culture into this era. I actually thought that I had, but... Um, I didn't look too closely at them. So, sorry about that. Is it the Morians or is it Joe? Are we going to transcend as Joe? Or is Joe transcend a no-go? And we'd rather play the Morians, who really, let's be real, no one seems to play. No one wants more of the Morians. <laughs> I see also we just ticked over 50 likes on YouTube, which is wicked to see. And around 50 live viewers at the minute as well, which is awesome. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, and thanks again, Devilish, for the super chats. Super chats, sir. <laughs> You're amazing. While also playing Civ, while also in class. Somebody stop devilish. <laughs> Out of control. Uh, the Morian's kind of spicy. A little bit of faith would be good, considering I'm doing pretty poorly. Um, a bit of science. Again, kind of that influence meets science run. Not as strong in the late game, it's got to be said, though. That, that dwindles off very quickly. So it would be quite nice. Uh, they also have a kind of a fun elephant. No resource requirements. So maybe we could actually build it too, which would be useful. I think we should play the Morians, not transcend as Joe. I don't see any reason really to transcend as Joe here. <laughs> like, I don't I, I don't hate the idea, but I, I don't think it's needed. Okay, let's quickly end this war. And take both of these cities. <laughs> Yoink. There we go. Three cities online. Boom, boom, boom. Expansionist. Done. Uh, really nice Joe cities here too, it's got to be said. I mean, well, pretty good. If I settle it here, it will be able to take advantage of these mountains when I connect Bake Do into the mix. Which I'm a bake to do very soon, uh, of course, because this will be a great attach for Memphis Hop to grab onto that. Cavemanism might grab this northern one as well so that it has access to the sea. Let's give it animal barns for 29 bucks. That will help its food really well to the point where the job makes almost no difference. Cool. We'll get to work on our second Confucian school. Uh, I have a little standing army here in Thebes and we might let them just do a little stand around here for a little bit longer. <laughs> and place down a Zhou district there. Another Confucian school into the mix. Brill. Eant. Sailing. Done. Uh, 1v1 me, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I would love to grab this territory, though, so I think we'll just hold. How much does this cost? 271. Very expensive for me because I already have so many. But, man, it would be nice to have access to the southern sea as well, wouldn't it? Both coastlines. Gonna miss the amazing Joe music. Hey, that is a really good point. That ability is not so good. Well, um, yeah, it has, it does actually have some pretty good upsides to it. I think it's maybe as strong as the average ability. Maybe. Let's get plus one city cap, without a doubt. Also get some more influence off our Joey districts. We'll trade luxuries with the Mayans, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Eat.
again, this grab would be would be very important to me if I could afford it. But I don't think I'm going to be able to afford it for a very long time. So I'll just try and hold my ground and hope for the best. And maybe instead focus in on grabbing some of these resources and attaching this up to Memphis. Bake do. Sure. Let's do this first. Bake do. Bake done. Uh... <laughs> uh... And... What do we want to do on Memphis? Five industry at the cost of five stability. Or we could lock it down. Or we could just accept our fate. Hmm. Let's... Seen as we're... Five stability does actually make a big difference. Let's adopt instead. And a shame we can't get a district there, but it's going to take me far too long to try and build out towards that. So... Uh, I'll build towards an area that's likely to have science in future, which probably is that way. Boom. Let's get more people on industry, I think. The more the merrier, right? Absolutely pump out these schools like there's no tomorrow. Uh, cavemanism. Should also probably look to grab a friend. But first, whomp, let's just buy a school. <laughs> Spend money to make money. Uh, and I think that the industrial improvements wouldn't go amiss here either, right? Probably all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll grab this saffron trifecta. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Uriarin down here might also want to take something. Minus 50% assimilate cost. I'll refuse that. Cultural proximity, of course, the downside to it is that you're going to get those events popping up like there's no tomorrow. Um, let's send down the army to secure the Southern Territory. Why not? We've got a standing army. Let's send them down as a show of force. Boot out any stragglers like this. Thank you very much. And see if we can take it. There we go. <laughs> Show them what we've got. Why not? Minus 10% outpost cost is pretty good. It's the minus, it's the plus one influence on emblematic district that's unexciting. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean the Morian's cultural trait? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I agree with you, Aaron. I totally agree. Sorry, I thought you meant the, uh, the, the cultural blitz ability. Uh, we were just talking about two different things. I'm, I'm on the same page with you now, and I, I, can, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I mean, it's better than transcending... In this case, it's better than me transcending as Joe, where I get nothing new. But, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, you are not wrong. Might, time, might be time to start getting the saffron to start improving some future food districts. Uh, I just wonder if... Saving up for this is more important, though. And actually, I think it is. So I'm going to reinforce this fight. <laughs> These guys didn't see that coming, did they? Huh? Yeah. How do you like that, bucko? Fortunately, I may lose my scout in the process, but so long as it can survive a turn, which it can, we're away laughing. Get the warriors in and surround. And then get the archer up the top. It's going to fire down. And we're going to call it a day. Boom. There's even a military star in it for me while I fight down here. Love it. We've sent the armed forces down to secure what's rightfully ours. And man, it feels good. Anyone else want to come in here and have a go? Huh? Punk? I might just run up here and fight this guy just for lols. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this motley crew. Get out of here. Shoe fly, do not bother me. So these are Babylonians. We'll have enough to quickly snag this now. Somebody's just been knocked out of the game. <laughs> See ya. Uh, I've got enough to use my ability, and I absolutely should, right? Thebes desperately wants to be under my influence. So let's spend money to hopefully make money on that. Start to try and grow up my influence wherever we can. We'll grab animal barns for the extra food that it will provide. Uh, and then I think just work on food. Now I really should probably be saving up 
weirdly for city number four. Might pay to harbor up this place and go for the attach first though. Yeah, it's only a hundred, so it makes a lot of sense. Let's do that. Should I move through? My influence has been so lackluster, I think the answer is no. I really have to build up my influence over these territories. Which maybe means I should also be focusing on my religion at the heart of our territory and then work its way out, yeah. Let's do that. Let's get all hands on D-E-C-K and get our holy site online. Uh, here are some more units that I can fight because they're in my land. No, we must have an alliance. Oh, yes, I see. What is going on? Let me in introduce myself to the Babylonians. Playing the new suspicious character. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, that's fine. I guess I'll allow that. Let's send the army back to base. Now that we've secured what's rightfully ours, Dr. Train contributed 300 channel points and the Morians won the poll on Twitch with 60% 60, 60 of the votes. <laughs> Unbelievable. But over here on YouTube, some 80% of the votes so far for the Morians. Wicked. Wicked. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just quickly probably in that poll now that we've got a good idea for who you'd like me to play nobody wants to see the joe transcend and as i say i think that's probably a good idea probably <laughs> Ay vey. cavemanism's gonna om nom nom chomp on that that will give me some more room to grow some industrialists. Maybe we get our next Joe district down again, largely just for the positive stability here more than anything. But it probably is a good idea. So I'll jump that to the front of the queue. Non-aggression pack with the Babylonians. We'll take that. We'll take it. Um, and I wonder if there's anybody who would like to trade me. If I just quickly flick through these players really no one any traders come on come on default persona you can do it okay <laughs> plus five science per that's pretty good let's grab that you give me plus five science nice easy way to grab a whole load of free resources! <laughs> and maybe we send this unit back to the north and, and make them into sort of a tree chopper or something. I think that's a good idea. Could grab that as well. That's been taunting me forever. Watch this be the one turn that my ally decides to snag it. The Bantu have fallen as well! Civilizations falling left, right and centre. 40 bucks out of those carcasses isn't bad. And a good dog has bought me 10 food for 10 turns on cavemanism. Nice. Let's put everybody on industry. Yeah. Yeah. Get the school done. Brilliant. Uh, next influence goals could be wanders. Although I wonder if I'm too late for that. Probably. Next goal after that could be... Uh... Maybe city number four? Just because these ones have been settled so haphazardly. I might want to sort of bring one into my own control. So maybe city number four. Um, just out of interest's sake, I'd like to poll the live viewers who are watching on something not related to this game. But related to if a stream happens tomorrow what it, that might look like. So I'm just going to quickly throw that at you. Let you let you quiz me with that. Um, before we move on to the next poll, which will be the next era, which has, I am almost certain, I'm going to say 99% sure, just to cover my backside, um, 
a modded option too, as well as the game's default options, which may not necessarily be bad choices, by the way. Just because there are modded options doesn't mean we have to take them, because I can kind of add them in uh, relatively easily, right? It's not too difficult to add them into a normal game. In fact, in this game, I've added four. Four different ones, not even part of the same pack. And it seemed to work fairly well, um, which is a another good sign, I think, on how mods work in Humankind and the future of modding in Humankind. Now we just sort of wait and see what Amplitude are going to deliver next. Um, okay, Thebes. You could probably, yeah, probably use some more industry. I see a lot of rocky fields, so might be a good idea to get stoneworks here in Thebes. And then probably attach this to Thebes. So let me hook up its saffron. And it's such a cheap attach that we may as well just jump in and do it. Throw everyone onto industry. Grab another, again, somewhat lackluster, but not terrible, Confucian school. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Probably uh, not there, because they'll all be reasonable gold districts. Probably these will be food and industry, so maybe out that way. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, anyone else need some lovin'? No, actually. I think all of these cities now... Nah, Memphis is going to be relatively small, but we might be able to grab over to Ims <laughs> and have a look at that. Ugh, we're not doing super hot in terms of fame. Maybe we need to go for another early war and steal another early city off our neighbor here. I have a proposal. Come now. I'll counter the non-aggression pack back at them just in case we do have to do that. <laughs> Uh, as with every upside, of course, there are downsides, as I was saying before. The downside to being under the influence of other people. While you get the positive benefit of gaining more science, you start to lose control of your civics as you start to be sort of shifted towards the civics that they have chosen. I will not spend influence to get this choice, but my ideological proximity with the Celts will increase. So it's a snowball effect. I say, okay, fine, I bow to the pressure of your influence over me, they get more, but I don't take a stability hit. If I refuse, I take a minus 50 stability hit for 10 turns. This also impacts the amount of influence I earn. Don't forget that influence is generated depending on the level of stability in a city. Real quick, if you've got 90% or more, you'll get 2 influence per population. 90% stability or less, down to 30%, will give you 1 influence per pop. And below 30%, you're getting nothing. At this point, actually, it doesn't have a massive impact on me because it's going to leave me within the same stability band so i'm happy to refuse it and keep control of what i've got interesting to note it varies situation by situation and it will recover slowly over time of course that's probably the only other important piece of information that you'd need to know to really understand how that works now i think era four was a little light Filling out the roster with wonders, a slow drip of content. It is nice to see the wonder, the wonder roster filled out. Thanks for streaming. The strip, asthma, cold, I need entertainment. Oh, Yorkie. When I say your play is sick, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear you're not feeling well. Hopefully my dorky voice in the background helps you at least not feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> success uh what kind of terrain do we have here let's see mm, a real mixed bag but no rivers so the river improvements are a waste of time probably we'll go forge and then i guess and then stone uh, even stoneworks doesn't really offer us too much what districts did the ai build for me here two food and three makers okay um in that case, maybe the granary is a good first build here. It probably is. We're likely to end up with loads of food. Uh, and what I might do as well, actually, seeing as we, we, we may be in for an early war, let me build one of my unique Joe units here to give us a little bit of additional strength. Um, and then maybe also in cavemanism, if we spent a turn getting one of them... 
uh, two turns that wouldn't go amiss and then maybe thieves might like to support them by spending two turns on an archer nice little bit of an extra army fairly easy build to be fair we can get this mad lad chopping this there isn't even a tree there i'm blind <laughs> amazing uh okay chop a tree there then thank you these units are going to move up onto what is very likely to be uh, a front line. Let's see if I can generate some grievances or something. Their grievances are pressing the faithful, mine none. Um, I can't even push anything on them. Would they reject any of these proposals? If they reject a proposal, that will generate me some war score. It doesn't look like that's going to happen either. Looks like we'll be going for just the fast surprise war tactic and hoping for the best. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Either way, let's amass my unique unit on their border. It will, of course, be unable to climb walls, right? And that, that doesn't escape me. I, I'm very aware of that. Army composition's coming in at a good time. Plus one combat strength on unit would, would full liberty send me to professional soldiers. I'll happily do that. Um, Unless they want to. here we could go for mercenary armies for the plus 10% food on cities. I think it's generally better than homeland. We'll I might try and keep a strong focus on that this game as well. Last few games I've been pretty weak on that. Allies. So I'm going to try and hold my civics and just sort of stand up for what I believe in. See what we can do. Uh, send this archer up to the front line. You're going to be very important for this fight. <laughs> so off you go. Sorry you spawned so far away. What did it spawn in? A Danu. Right. So at one point this was Assyrian land because we picked up a Danu. Good stuff. I like them. They're pretty good districts actually. Don't sleep on the Danu, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly buy an archer and also build an anti-cavalry spearman here just to push our military strength over the edge because i note that the city is getting more and more units every turn um it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger another incentive really to move on it now though so let's declare this unjust war uh for freedom sure <laughs> surprise default ai persona 4 <laughs> It just got such a smooth ring to it, doesn't it? Hopefully it's uh, actually going to spawn the unit near the city and not super far away. Did I build it in the wrong city? <sighs> oh, jeez. Okay, let's just hope that this is enough then. It should be. I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. These ones are actually outside of the city walls so what I, we could do is close in on them first pin them out here behind this river by the way which is a really dreadful spot um do we have military superiority no we should do yeah we absolutely do uh so that's fantastic i'm gonna very quickly uh just have to jump on a very quick break so, I'll let this battle play out manually for your eyeballs to see, and I'll be right back.
<laughs> looks like that went okay. Uh, I feel like it probably could have gone better. Let's take the city while we're here, shall we? Um, I might seek to manually do this one. Just in case. <laughs> you never know what could go wrong. Like this. Look at this. Ah! You're not going to be able to fight your way out of here, Chief. But maybe... Maybe my special heavy Joe cavalry. Oh, yes. They can just come in swinging. Incredible. Go, you. Stand up on this hill. Too easy, really. Um. In fact, you know what? Just auto. Just do your thing. Didn't realize you could stack units on top of units like that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice attack. Took 40 damage and dealt 9. Where do I hire more soldiers like you? Okay. In all seriousness, though, uh, that, was a, that was really successful. Really successful. Let's continue the, this push this time we're not gonna bow easily foreign customs is a fantastic fantastic one for us to get early on plus 100 fame earned from ace seat stars Every yes that is brilliant that is brilliant this run is absolutely gonna need it as well Okay, let's forward march onto this river. Because we've got people to destroy. I might just manually take this fight first, though. Let's put our horses up on the high ground. And... Maybe reinforce the archer right up above. <laughs> Also grab this archer, station it there, and then maybe just bring one of the strongest swordsmen in just to hold this high ground entrance to the archers. Probably everyone else could just sit this one out. Uh, nah, I think, I think I'll stand there, bait that attack, try and keep the horses alive, which they were, obviously. <laughs> well and truly kept nice and everybody else got the benefit of being able to move ahead slightly um, and some of them can heal up for the next turn although granted not many if any how many horses you know roll like that? <laughs> stop okay um So much land out this way. Oh my god. And we're breaking our way through. <laughs> Which is always nice. What are you doing? You're being kind of scary, actually. Lucky they're my friend. <laughs> Close to victory in the war. Okay, looks like we're not going to be able to push the whole way. We will, however, take the city that is rightfully ours. Uh, and 50 bucks for our time okay good another quickly resolved success of a war wonder if i burn down this city though instead of keeping it i just don't know if <laughs> i don't know if another undeveloped city is worth my time i mean i guess it has three districts already maybe it is starting with a bit more of a head start than everyone else it's always just a, a real struggle for me. I never quite know what to do. Because if I burn it down, it's not actually going to start with anything more. Unless I finally get my A into G and move through into the next era. Which it looks like I'll be able to do next turn. So I'm going to move through next turn. When I move through next turn, there's no city improving anything in this era anyway. That probably means that I keep this. I guess. We would all 
benefit from growing closer. This will be a blessing for all pop. Like I say though, it's a close call. I'm just gonna counter that off them. Because <laughs> we could just continue to systematically take them down. Heal up those horses. Heal up these units. Maybe could disband a crappy one. There goes another player. Was that the Hittites? I think that was the Hittites. <laughs> that was the Goths! Yes. The Goths have fallen as well. Yikes. Hit yikes. Um, I need to use this ability again. And it looks to me like that one's not a terrible territory to grab. My influence is growing. But uh, it's, a, it's a really close fight here. It's a really close fight. I think now that I've got my gold star there, the only one that I don't have is the gold merchant star. Um, I'm not going to stick around for that. I think it's time we grab the Morians or we risk falling behind. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> Okay, the Morians have been taken. Anybody got any backup plans? Hashtag vote for golf with friends. <laughs> Your show always makes things more fun. I hope so. You have a wee bit of saffron to connect there. That I do, actually. Um, my only legal option would be to transcend here. Slightly illegal options would be to choose the Romans because they have good influence generation, the Persians because they have good influence generation, the Garamantes, because they favor influence generation. Uh, oh god. That is... rough. I wonder if it was super recent. Okay. I've also just had another idea then. Maybe I go all the scientists in the world onto money. Disband like, I don't know, uh, these two to get some population in here quickly. I said these two. <laughs> Get out of there. These three. Sure. They'll give me just one standing army. Which is nice and manageable for while I'm not at war. Um, then I can get... I, I guess I don't need to rush the Joe districts now. <laughs> Five turns ago and see if the Morians are available. I could. I'm starting to lean towards an alternate strategy here. And maybe I'll play it out because it could be also useful to watch, maybe as a viewer. Um not the ideal strategy, but let's see if let's see if I can get any value out of it. I do like the idea of plus one faith and plus one stability on my research quarters. But probably the science on holy sites is the way to go. Um, let's make sure that I connect any cheap resources and stuff down here first. So a harbor, for example, nice. Uh, I see saffron, ebony, and dyes, which have been pillaged. How dare you? And then it's literally just the capital, which is going to work on its industry. And then hopefully produce these artisan's quarters very quickly for us. Get all of that saffron connected. That will benefit the whole empire for food generation. Once they have some farmer's quarters, of course. They do need to have farmer's quarters. So, court be worth pursuing that. Nice. Refuse the civics osmosis here. Just gonna have to live with the consequences. <laughs> Why did I struggle so hard to say that? Consequences. 
Jeez. And I'll chop down that forest. They lack the garrison trait. Always transcend. Oh, good night, King of Toto. Sorry, I missed your good night stream. I've got both chats up again now, and I'm watching them very closely. Can play the achievement Persians. Who are the achievement Persians? <laughs> I think I'm transcending as Joe, uh, and I'm going to try my damnedest. Part of the plan, and I don't know if it's even the right thing to do, is to try and stick around and get this money star. How many turns is it going to take me though? Um, so I need roughly 50 influence and then 400 more. So I need sort of 427 influence. Uh, gold rather. 122 a turn. That has me at four turns. Yeah. I mean, sure, right? Sure. It's not like I haven't got other things to be building in this era still. So let me just <laughs> do that. Focus in on grabbing all the saffron, all of these farmers' quarters. Uh, keep people working gold to try and maximize my gold income as well. I should also look to trade with the Nubians, who have been my friend for the whole game. Let's buy some extra industry for our cities. Uh, let's also maybe spend money to make money. Grab their gold multiplier. A little bit of gemstone? No. Obsidian? No. Salt, marble. Sage is very, ch well, relatively cheap. <laughs> Lead. Looks like I, I can actually afford that, so I'll grab some of that off them too. We'll try and get all of this trade going. Something I've been sleeping on. It'll help my stability as well. Might get the standing army to chop down a tree while they're standing around doing nothing. And just check again on the star. How are we doing? One more turn. I'll have a completely gold era and then hopefully I can transcend and then go through a relatively quick era next time, right? The idea being because I've generated so much fame in this era, I can afford to generate less next era. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that'll play out, but we're going to find out. Tree choppers, continue to clear out some of this forested area for me, please. Pump industry into Memphis and also this city. Which I should... Do I have any name? Namers? No. Do I have any namers? Oh, Dusk. Yes, I do. You super chatted. Let's call this one. Durr... Dusk. Durr dusk... Oops. Jeez. Can he spell? Duskin. Down. <laughs> Brilliant. It will grow into, I think, actually, a pretty decent spot. Uh, let's have a look at its terrain. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's not really a lot to write home about, is it? Uh, no rivers, so that's useless. Could just go for the extra food on farmer's slots. Maybe extra farmer's slots, actually. Would not go amiss. Let me grab one of those. Yeah, we'll just double down on your food production, by the looks. Actually, quite a lot. Let's feed the people. We'll grab it from the harbors as well. And then we'll snake back through and grab a couple of infrastructures. Very good. Maybe a future garrison wouldn't go amiss either. Somewhere around there. We'll think about it. Uh, cavemanism would like cheaper career outpost cost. I will refuse that again. No, says the man. Do I have the star? Yes, a perfectly golden first era and a very long one. Let's now transcend as Joe, as my only influence culture. I will get plus 10% additional fame gain bonus multiplier. Of course, it's important to remember. Will that be enough to win the game for me? Probably not, but nice to have either way. A non-aggression pact with the Persians. We'll counter it back at them. Again, if they want to buy it, they can. But I'm not just going to roll over and give it to them. As I roll through into the next era as Joe, I'm immediately interested in claiming the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus as a juicy wonder that's still left to claim. 
Plus two science per district. Nowhere near as good as it used to be, but for 250 influence, uh, I think that's a pretty easy claim. I also think that if I build it somewhere where the AI has already built a lot of districts for me, like Memphis, uh, it could be super beneficial to the future of this city. So, let me smash it down in the middle of Memphis, and maybe before anything else, get everybody to build it? Eh, the marginal return on getting them to build it is, is really pretty garbage, so I won't. Let's get trade expeditions, fortifications, philosophy, uh, and those three technologies, because they're all brilliant. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and chop out this wonder by continuing to remove forests to try and finish this a little bit quicker while we build it in Memphis. Knowledge authorities, plus one science per trade route. There must be an Super good. Wide world, if you saw my video from today on the YouTube channel, you'll know um, that is a very important part to being able to boost up your early science very quickly. You don't have to do it, but would highly recommend because trade is already so good that you'd be disadvantaged not to, really. Um, okay. Why are those not improved? And is there anywhere to send this unit to provide value? Not really. Uh, maybe it provides vision by just hanging around here. Debate and discussion are not the pastimes of the idle. The city north of Memphis is a prime candidate for Machu Picchu. Who will touch if you start building toward it early. And it sounds to me like we've just crossed over 60 likes. Good oh! Too late to hunt for the new world. Um, there may not be a new world, Pete. I don't think it would be too late for me to get there. But I consider the chances of there being one to be kind of low. Given how much I've already revealed. It looks to me like I could jump up there. Or I could try and... I can't squeeze through. But there could be some merit in jumping around. Because, I mean, look. At all of that space. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's get trade expeditioning very soon. Jump across here with the whole standing army. Try and grab this. And then try and snag our way back through our ally. And treat this as the new Your world. I like that. High. I like that a lot. Uh, am I losing this? No, but I... It is sort of a good reminder to me that I should try and attach it sooner rather than later, actually. So, let me just attach this territory. Uh, yeah. Because I've just been expansionized on and lost that one. That's pretty rough. Um... That's pretty rough. I'm going to have to build some units to take that back. <laughs> because obviously that's not going to fly. Oof. Oof. Chop down that tree and trade expeditions is happening soon. Fortifications is nice to have first just in case a bad war is declared. And we'll chop down that tree so the timing's pretty good. Uh, plus one combat strength, plus 15 money, or cheaper units. You know, actually, the cheaper units aren't terrible right now. So I might go for that. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, you're just sort of wasting your time. I guess you can just chop a tree. <laughs> Thebes is going to grow uncomfortably large and grab this territory as well. <laughs> Poor Thebes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's too big. It's too big. Five farmers it's just fire ten people out of it for a farmer's quarter. There we go. It grew large out of necessity only. Buy the rest of these units. I don't really want to have to fight the Celts over there. Um, but what a bloody expand it was out of them. I guess nothing. I guess I didn't lose too much. Pleased to make yours. It's just like, why fight them when there's this new world to be taken? And I think the answer is don't. So, 
Nice to have the standing army nonetheless, though, even just as a deterrent. Let's try and move through our allied ter allies' territory with it straight away. Um, grab myself hydrology and standing army next. Use my AC ability... where? Down here. Thank you. Slowly start to spread my influence down through Thebes. Now that everything's connected. The Persians, my longtime enemy, have fallen as the continent emerges with what could be as little as four great powers out of a ten player start. Jeez. I need to get over here fast. Let's go, everybody. We're wasting time. Wasting time. I'll start by acquiring this Northern Ireland. I mean, island. Sorry. <laughs> we'll start by acquiring Northern Ireland. Uh, oh, it's all a bit shite. I'm going to assume that this is the best spot for the outpost because that's where the trade post was established. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Uh, let's go learning on all cities. Let's research Imperial Power next. Then backtrack to craftsmanship and rhetoric if we have time. Um, power! <laughs> oh, Yawning Dory followed 39 minutes ago on Twitch and I forgot to even acknowledge it. How rude of me. Ridiculous. Um, I could, my, could, my religion could very well be dead. And that's why I have no faith. Yeah, my religion is dead. So I have no followers. If you have no followers, you have no faith. My religion has no followers. It is completely gone. I'm left with two choices here. I could adopt someone else's. Or I could attempt to resuscitate my own. Um, without picking a, a, cult, a culture that bears faith, it's kind of hard though. Could look to jump on to Nubian polytheism. Which has respect bounty of the seas and protect the weak. Interesting. My people like Nubian polytheism. They also like Harappan polytheism a little bit. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it exists near me. They have abstain- okay, right. Right. This is actually a, a, a game where it- Hey, Star Soldier, nice to see you. Streaming a little bit later today, hoping that some of the- or hoping that all of the regulars will be able to get a, a chance to see the stream. Or maybe it'll be a little more- little more time zone friendly for sort of people more like me and maybe in the Americas. I don't know. Um, we'll see how we go though. We'll see how we go. I think it would be a, a good idea to jump onto Nubian polytheism here. Um, and actually, maybe this is a good example to talk against. Uh, we were talking a little bit about religion before. So it might be a good chance for me now to talk a little bit about religion in a losing scenario. Maybe more useful. I don't know. Either way. Um, so in this case, I have got my blue empire here. I'm doing fine. It's not perfect, but I'm doing okay. I am losing the religious screen though. Despite having an initial pantheon founded, I was unable to get Joe polytheism really off the ground. You can see there are no followers within my empire. Zero percent. Why? Because religious pressure from my neighbors through their faith generation has been stronger than mine and it's overwhelmed me. I had but one holy site, they've had multiple holy sites likely, or they've picked cultures that have provided them with even more faith. Maybe they're generating faith from their civics as well. Who knows? But they're generating a lot of faith. And when you click on a territory, you can see where the faith pressure is coming from. Look at it all. Spreading in from all of these neighboring followers from Nuthian polytheism. You can see Joe polytheism, my religion, doesn't stand a chance, even in my own territories, right? And so in this case... I could either look to build up holy sites within my own territories, choose cultures that provide me with faith. Um, examples could be the Aztecs, plus five faith on sacrificial altars, right? Whereas the Byzantines provide none. The Franks provide some too. So I could look to build it up that way. 
Um, and that's a perfectly viable option. Or I could say, actually, I don't want to control my own faith this game. I could jump into this screen, change my state religion to the one that my people are following. Here my people are clearly following Nubian polytheism. Does it suit me? Maybe. I could consider reforming. Something to bear in mind to help also with the cohesion of your empire. Bear in mind though, it will bring your cultures much more closely aligned if you adopt someone else's religion. You'll also lose maybe the extra for experts things like religious grievances and that kind of thing, right? Something to bear in mind. I agree it's pr it's probably still in my wheelhouse to be able to take my own religion and build it up. Um, fun idea from you, Johnny, to grab a relatively cheap religion that was someone else's and just jump on that and try and build it up from there. I mean, there is still one more slot. Joe Polytheism could make a comeback. Without any holy sites to build, though, it's kind of hard. Um, I could do my strat of moving through to a new era quickly. I note that there is two modded cultures. Three, but one of them's actually a scientist. So, rip. But we do have two modded aesthetic cultures in this era, as well as the Franks. So this is kind of a spicy pick. Let's have a look. I modded in uh, these two cultures I haven't played with before, but they are made by members of this community, I believe. Uh, I, so we have the Georgians. Who look to like mountains, maybe. What do they have? Unflinching piety. Plus two faith on mountain. Plus one influence on mountain. Plus three influence per territories under the religion's influence. Yikes. Plus one faith per number of territories in my sphere of influence. Okay, so that's our cultural sphere of influence, so that's good. Plus one faith per state religion follower. Plus three influence, plus three food. And per and, and the Cross Dome Church benefits from a... This is like the dream follow-up from Joe. Surely. Let's also have a look at the Heian Japanese as well, though. Plus three money per number of territory in my sphere so this is my cultural sphere this is something we're winning by the way plus three influence per number of territories in my sphere okay so that's their trait their territory their district rather provides plus five influence plus one influence and plus one money per adjacent district and they have a samurai hmm i reckon we play one of these because they're new. Let me throw up a poll and see what you would like me to play. Thank you to the 28 people who signaled what they'd like to see me play tomorrow. Humankind won, which I didn't uh, expect anything else to happen. It was around a 60-40 split. Here we have a pretty interesting call though. We have the Georgians who I could take and try for a sort of try to either steal another religion now or just build up our own they do generate influence per number of territories in my sphere of influence a little wordy i know <laughs> but we could try and build up some faith with them or snag another religion now the other option of course if i bounce back to it is the heian japanese heian um they'd be easier for us to just slide into we wouldn't have to worry about faith. We also wouldn't get the added benefit of the mountains that we've already built districts around where possible. So a positive and a negative to take out of them. Who will it be? The poll is up on Twitch. Thank Huck for Huck. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I might even vote myself. <laughs> Democracy at its finest. Um, I need some more water. Those co yes, both of these cultures are modded. Um, so I'm just going to go for a real quick BRB and then we'll come back and see if it's right for me to move now or if I should maybe wait a little bit. Uh, I won't be too long. This should be a, a pretty quick one because it will just be a drinks break. I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, who did we vote? And how did we vote? Oh my god. Why did that poll not go up? Oh, for crying out loud. An error occurred. Please try again. YouTube! <laughs> oh. Oh, why? Hey, no pressure, Twitch, but all eyes on you. <laughs> okay, the poll seems to have worked now. Yes, I did spell the Georgians the Joggians. Uh, hopefully that doesn't get too lost in translation. <laughs> Either way, let's jump back to the gameplay screen. I will, of course, give you a minute uh, on YouTube to get your votes in. So please do still place those. Uh, you will likely outnumber the Twitchians, maybe. What game speed is considered the best experienced? Experienced, Iraq. Um, I think ge generally players consider normal or slow to be the the most balanced uh and and preferable experience uh so it is probably normal speed um normal or slow i would say though there's more there's a, a more of a strong preference among players for the slightly slower pace than the slightly faster uh, the game becomes difficult to fit all the errors in if you're playing on the faster speeds it also becomes difficult to uh really experience the final ones their technologies or units or really anything like that um if you're playing on blitz mode so to answer that question generally normal or slow Hopefully you get into a culture that has a bunch of religious buildings to help combat the religions. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Uh, so the Twitch poll, which ran during the break, has concluded a very close poll, 57% to 43%, in favour of the Heian Japanese over the Georgians. Very interesting. Very interesting. Like I say, I'll give YouTube a little bit longer. Just a reminder, though, here's what we get with the Georgians. Uh, focus on mountains, on faith on influence and on food out of this cool custom rendered cross dome church uh, and then in the Heian Japanese we have the Shinden estate uh, which just provides blanket influence and stability uh, and a small adjacency bonus not actually that good to be fair but this trait will be more generically acceptable let's remind ourselves of how many territories are within our influence I note their unit is worse though um, yeah, I mean, some. <laughs> Should probably work on that too, eh? Hey. Eh? <laughs> probably should. Remind me later, I don't think that our fame's gonna be in a position to do that just yet. Um, I will add the mine extractor to the start of that queue while my ally sends all of their units through my borders in a totally non-threatening way yikes uh and the massive city of thebes would love to maybe get like plus two food on its rivers or something probably it's certainly got plenty of river now okay these units have made it to northern ireland can't rename it yet but i will if that's the will of the people. Uh, ooh, and I'll take that too while I'm at it. Tree chopper. May as well continue to chop trees. Got nothing better to do. Let's quickly jump in and check these stars. You want to know how I got these stars? I definitely want to try, at least, to get my gold aesthete stars before I move through, probably. Although we could go for the quick jump now and just say, actually, I'll take one of these DLC cultures and then I'll spend a really long time with them instead. To try and make up for a relatively lackluster mid-game. Let's go glorify for tradition, unfortunately. Um, but I do like the benefit that it gives. I see we have some condescending treatment from this neighbor. Yikes. Let's try to build up our dependency on each other by buying another one of their trade routes. Horses, a really good idea to surge a whole load of city. A whole load of uh, food into my cities, I should say. I'll continue to refuse the osmosis, I think. And we can bounce through friendly territory here, don't forget. So let's just run through and try and grab that. 
Let's run through here and try and get... I guess this. Actually, maybe I do literally just want to take this right now. Let's do it. Yoink. <laughs> Mimosa. Online. As I continue my expansion. And maybe it's technically justified because of this one impassable tile <laughs> that connects them together. <laughs> I don't know. It could be considered overreach. It could be considered overreach. Let's try and snag the entire northern part. Um rather than running down in here and grabbing these odds and sods. I can likely grab three or four territories and have a pretty good connected by the sea uh, northern stretch of our empire, of our continent. Looks like I've got influence to burn, baby. So... Do I want to just panic place it on a 516 or spend three turns? I think I'll just panic place it. Yeah. Ensure that we get it down quickly, grab it and move through refuse any civics changes i don't need that at the minute and just about finish the mausoleum of helicarnassus if we were a bit more clever about it we might even be able to pull it off two turns okay we'll get thebes on it that will get it done well, bam in a turn there's our first wonder online we're in third place but I, can't help wonder what sort of I mean a, a lot of players have fallen off the bottom to be fair <laughs> but we're in third place hey octopus doing some baking at the same time old lotoa here as well brilliant both units do require iron p it's a good thing that we've got i think two or connected now don't we two none yet two in a minute let me grab one with iron. With gold, rather. Jesus. <laughs> grab that other foodie district, although it's unlikely to be filled at this point. So maybe I cram people into food as well. Yeah, I like that a lot. Grab a swordsman just to keep our armies updated. I do love the look of those juicy islands over there as well. But we might just get Chopper to keep chopping. <laughs> Good job, Chops. <laughs> what a name becomes one of the giants astride the glow and what will you still no influence stars but I'm working on building up my influence now especially as we start to spread across the world a little bit more uh, ooh, that's an ugly set. Oh, okay. Gonna have to reach through and grab this border with yellow here. <laughs> this expansion uh, hasn't been terrible. I will trigger this fight and I might take it manually, just in case it goes south. They've got the high ground, but it kind of looks like I can overwhelm and then send the anti-cav up to do exactly what it does best destroy chariots from standing on a on a, a blinking river tile as well love it the archers can provide a little bit of fire support relief maybe we can clear a spot for this dude to get through it's impossible that's fine <laughs> try and also snag some military stars maybe Boom. Crushed it. Fantastic. If they established a city, I wouldn't even be mad at destroying it and taking it as my own, to be honest. Um, Eagle-eyed units or science investing. Let's go for science investing. Because we still need the extra science. Our Joe start will only keep us going for so long. And I argue, not actually as long as we'd really need. Uh, Durduskin can grab a friendly territory. Huzzah! <laughs> and grab another uh, Confucian school. So let's do that. 
that city has two, which is sort of the bare minimum. Eventually, we'll probably look to break Thebes up into two, two cities, but for now, it's probably okay. It's got all of its Joe districts built, which is some kind of miracle, really. Uh, it will need extra walls, and maybe we want to benefit from trade routes as well, because we have a few of those going, but not as many as I would like for turn 75, which we're about to hit sometime very soon. Memphis. Woof. Do you just want to keep growing? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> but let's make sure it's well defended first. By getting its walls... I wonder if the harbour upgrades are largely a waste of time for it. They probably are. This one money from ongoing trade could be okay. I might go for more of a district play here though. Um, question is what's going to net the best yields. I will eventually want to get science down around these horses. Probably three of them. So maybe I work on those. That'll help us in the long run so that I don't fall behind on science, which I so easily do. Another inspiration for me making that video on early game science tips. Um, something that I can easily deprioritize myself and fall behind on. Plus one farmer's slot on a city per outpost, or outpost, sorry, per farmer's quarter. Pretty decent. Would shift me all the way towards plus 10% industry. Which is a pretty radical shift in our ideologies. Um, I wonder if city development and attachment is more important. Like getting a new city over this way. It probably is. So let me just destroy this. Push through with my entire army. <laughs> I'm really not mucking around in the new world today. Really not mucking around. Surge these units through while this one destroys that and claims it for us. We can then get a good sort of outreach into what I'm sort of thinking about as the new world. Uh, then We'll then send them back this way and maybe try and grab Chertsky, which looks like the greatest mountain range of all time. Oh my god! <laughs> the Joe district in there. Imagine. Let's take foreign outposts, let's refuse that civic, and old chops down here is going to keep doing what namesake would suggest, pumping a little bit of extra industry into Thebes. Time to use my ace theat ability, but where? Let's do it there. Have a nice little break down the middle now. <laughs> uh, influence has separated those two from each other. They can no longer support each other, in my mind, without moving through me first. Hopefully that's helpful. Oh look, the great blue hole. Somewhere. There it is. Nobody's claimed it yet either. Oh god, don't tempt me. Maybe I need some boats as well, do I? Yeah. Uh, might wait until I get better ones, though. Science! Oh my god, a bot? Devilish, in the name of science, please! Uh, naming my religion Jumboism for you, mate. Oh, yes. Please, allow me. We're gonna try and resuscitate cavemanism, I think. Um... So the English and the Khmer have been taken. Not terrible. Swahili, of course I love, but... We're going to steer clear. Looks like the Georgians are winning on YouTube, which puts me in a really difficult middle spot. Uh, <laughs> where the platforms have split either way and actually split roughly even a number of votes, an even proportion of votes. Oh, democracy. Let me down. Mass buyout of pop... of theatres of pops in all cities you reckon, Johnny. I don't know if that's worth the population cost.
plus four influence. It's around ten percent. I will pro I will prioritize it, but I might not shoot people out of the city for it. But I will build it, actually. Yeah. Allow me to build it. Get the forge first. That will, of course, provide more industry. Um... And then, what do we need to do? We also probably want to do it in Thebes as well, I guess. Sorry, Thebes. One day you'll get that farmer's quarter. <laughs> I don't know when, but one day you will. I promise. Um, these guys have just burnt this down, which is great, because now I can just rebuild it in the exact same spot, probably. Uh, actually, let's go here for the higher food. That's actually a different spot. Amazing. I'll take them both. <laughs> yoink, yoink. That's pretty good. There's our northern city. And the English have just declared war on me. Yikes. Units are fairly far away. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's try and quickly produce two little dudes with swords in each city. Uh, we don't have good archers yet, so <laughs> no luck there. But hopefully the swordsman should be good enough. We can get eight produced fairly quickly. I'm surprised at this. Why has this persona in particular, with no characteristics at all, been so aggressive at wanting to fight me? It really doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense to me. Either way, units are appearing. Good. I'll send at least these four back as well. Oh my god, they're just bouncing left and right like the biggest idiots. I'll send four back, but I think I need to keep four here. Just in case someone else gets any crazy ideas. Uh, and I think that actually upgrading this into a city is going to be a pretty fast priority for me as well. So I'm going to keep these four units here, they're going to heal, and then we're going to get the next city down over this way. Army wages could be useful. Uh, although, really not really. <laughs> Scientific facts could try and get faith out of my research quarters. Or value out of my existing holy site. Not really that useful, is it? Let's nationalize the industry instead, actually, of, even of that second city, I think. Just because I'm going to need more populations close to home right now. Cavemanism, the city, should get stone walls, because it's probably going to be the first one to get hit. And defend in place. Memphis will defend in place as well. Make sure that it's got walls. It does. So it's kind of in a better spot, actually. I think Memphis can keep building its theatre, as weird as that might seem. <laughs> Duskin, I might get you to get us an archer, then go through the process of getting walls and whatnot. Full send it on food and industry, of course, because we're in war times. Yikes! <laughs> Money would be beneficial too, but... I mean, look, can't have everything, can you? Alright. Excuse me? 
Mm, not at war with me, but aggressive toward me. Uh, bring it. Okay. <laughs> Bring it! <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> There's no way down. We're all just gonna have to stay up here and hold and try and funnel through this way While they're ranged. Oh these these blinking Hunnic hordes uh! Entire army wiped out on that new front Retreat, clearly the right answer. This makes me think I need to move through regardless of my fame here. Because I'm being outclassed by unique units. I, I can't compare to these, even. Oh, they're ranged too, so they're just going to kick me up the backside. Quickly go for some upgrades and heals where possible. Whoo! and look to maybe concede that to them. Double down on these ones. Yeah. That may have been an overstep, but I really need to get that next city online in that case. Send those units as support. Thebes supports you in every way, cavemanism. <laughs> oh, the unjust wars, honestly. Um, and you know what? You can probably send your standing army as well. Nice. Well. It's alright. <laughs> Any units coming in? And what are they? One warrior. And four unique swordsmen. Down here, fighting this unit. He's our friendly chopper is going to retreat out of dodge. Looks like we have uh, an invading army of... 12 plus 1 is 13. Okay. Thebes, we might need to get you on a couple more units once you've got your walls up. Because it looks like you're going to be hit kind of hard. Maybe even harder than Memphis. Might position the units out of Memphis. In the middle. And get Memphis to follow up and do kind of the same deal. Let's get some swordsmen. Let's get an archer. Unfortunately, I don't even have the copper anymore to build my unique so I guess I just build more swords <laughs> can't go wrong with more swords after all <laughs> oh dear we're gonna get slaughtered okay and as I was saying I think we move through and forego this benefit 3,000 of that yeah, yeah yeah let's move through uh the vote is just dead split between these two cultures welcome in major King Kong um we're just deciding on who I should play through as the next one Faith and science, perfection. Pink has so many units. Yeah. Ally willing to help. Ugh, God. <laughs> Sight for sore eyes. My tyrannical ally. Their war support is much higher than ours. We are much less powerful than them, and they depend on my resources. Um, I have no crisis point to push. I don't think they are. Can't e I can't even threaten them. All I can do is say, hey, stop oppressing my people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have a look at our relations. You can see I'm at war with them. They're at peace with them. Um, we're in an, uh, they're in an alliance with Orange. Speak honestly with each other. Who is in an... You're right. So I could maybe jump in on this. They refused it. Okay, so they don't want to let me into their triple alliance. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to retreat away from this. They didn't continue pillaging there so maybe there is hope for me actually in this new world to get a city online here's one extra unit to reinforce this army 
they're back to four. Save up every penny that I've got. I need 1,800 influence. Okay. Thebes can exchange six people for some walls. Is that a good trade-off? Probably not. I'm going to say no. Go for Mounted Warfare. My last technology in the era, so kind of incentivized to move through for that as well. Really? And Memphis, please start producing some units. It's got enough tiles that um, people should be able to stand on it and hide, though. If they need to stand on it and hide. <clears throat> Maybe in that vein, we protect this city just with crappy arches. Sorry, Der Dusk. You're our luck. Uh, ferocious on all of our units might be useful over the next few turns, so let's give them an extra combat strength each. Looks to me like they've determined that Der Dusk is the weakest link. Yes, so let's try and... But only with one unit, actually. Maybe I could get a easy win there. I probably could. Let's push this. Yep, there's an easy win. Obviously these units will run back and hide, but it just looked like a little bit of easy war score for me. <laughs> Against a suspicious English. Okay, good. There's Mounted Warfare, really incentivizing me to move through to the next era. Um, and actually we have picked up a few other stars here and there. It's just my influence Aesthete stars that I'm really struggling with, ironically. <laughs> Yikes. Would also be nice to get five extra districts built, if at all possible, but that feels like a bit of a pipe dream right now. No chops! <laughs> Not like this! Oh, he fought so hard. Alright, enough talk. I think it's time for some action on this culture front. Right? 7,300. I need another 1,500 to get through there. Could quickly trigger a couple of militarist fights to grab a star there and then jump through. Might be the right thing to do. Are these my military stars coming now? <laughs> they could be. I think I have enough visibility here that I can move this way. Maybe even send these three out of Memphis. Squeeze that one. Ah, there's no need to squeeze that one, I don't think. I'll bring these three down as backup for what could be a fight down in a river here. And actually, we should use this war as a chance to grab this territory back. Yes. Let's do that. Let's push down here. Push on the aggression, I say. Do arms! You scoundrels. I don't think they stand a chance there. Like, what is this unit doing? <laughs> they just run here, get scared and run away. Oh dear. Okay, what I want to do here, ideally, is actually try and find the administrative center and take this where is the administrative center stronghold there it is it's kind of far away would be nice if i could clear that out without triggering this fight so i'll manually resolve it and not bring these units in Use the friendly movement buff. Really important extra tip to note, of course, is that you can move through friendly units for free. So this archer can go one, two, and then effectively skip a few and land itself out this way. Really useful for, um, for trying to get certain units into better tactical positions. Like, for example, bringing this archer all the way up onto the high ground and over the river. 
really good. Uh, whereas at the start of this turn, as far as I could move was this tile. Very, very handy. Um, and of course, all the standard rules apply, so maybe don't attack from low ground like this unless you're trying to overwhelm with just sheer numbers, like I'm trying to do here. Also be a good idea to stay off these river tiles. Shoot for the high ground. Shoot... Ow. <laughs> shoot from tiles that don't have rivers. But also, maybe if you can, from forested tiles to give yourself a little bit more protection. But overall, do try and sort of spring spring your way through friendly units to get a little bit of extra movement out. It's particularly useful when you're right next to an en enemy because they will exert sort of a zone of control, limiting the amount of tiles that you can move. So what you can do is sort of spring through like this, through friendly units, out of crappy low ground situations, and up onto the high ground. Really powerful. Really, really, really powerful. Here as well, I'll do the same thing. I'll stab this unit to clear the tile so that this one can get off the low ground. Now, all of my units are defending from the high ground. I have reinforcements that I can bring in if I need to on the flank, and I'm looking really good. Looks like they're ransacking me in the south. Oh my god, Huck, why? <laughs> These units. Potentially pretty problematic. Maybe okay for the time being, but you know that they will. You just got surrounded by reinforcements. This battle could basically win the war for you. Yeah, or, or more like... More like I could... Oh my god, yeah, okay, so they did just bring in their reinforcements, which is now unfortunately going to have to force me to bring in mine, which I'd held off doing for a really long time, but, fine, <laughs> you twisted my arm, I'll bring in my dang reinforcements, let's get rid of this unit, see ya, it'll get rid of an archer, but more importantly give me space to move in. Use my reinforced high ground to my advantage. <laughs> Just let them know who's boss. Could also reinforce out of here. You know what? Because they brought in the big guns, I'm gonna bring in the big guns as well. Get in these huge move reinforces. Uh, which is absolutely massive. Prey on the low ground noobs. There we go. <laughs> yeah, man, didn't that turn into the real battle of the battle of the brawn? Looks like we just ticked over 70 likes by the sound of Octopus's comment. Amazing. Thank you everybody for your support on a, on a longer stream today. We just crossed over the three hour mark. Maybe we'll go for a fourth. Maybe. Um, in turn. Feeling good. Feeling good after that combat as well. Oh, jeez, we should really heal this unit. It's not in friendly territory. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I'm, I am going to push for the ransack up here. And maybe just run back to base with these guys. Now that they're in friendly territory, I'll spend the 88 bucks to heal the very, very weak one. And then the rest of these units can probably just sort of spend a few turns licking their wounds. Uh, overall war score is still going in my favor, so I don't feel the need to push those free points. I'll just probably just hold these archers, kind of wedge them in between both cities in case they need to bounce either way. I have the influence nearly finally to get this new city, which really incentivizes me to move through now. I think I've pushed this about as far as I can. Grabbed as much of this as I can. Yep. Okay, so your votes were were pretty split down the middle, to be completely honest. Um, YouTube did have more of a preference towards Georgia than Twitch had towards the Japanese, but really it was a split vote either way. I'm going to take executive command and control, I think. Hmm... Show not mercy. Oh, God. <sighs> I 
not knowing if I'm going to have a religion or not makes it kind of difficult for me. Um, I think that the... I think that the... Oh, hold on. The decision has actually been made for me. The Georgians have been taken. That's a shame because I was actually going to lean towards the Georgians. Okay, in that case, my hand has been forced. I've been forced to take the Japanese. All right, so we get plus three money per number of territories in my sphere of influence and plus three influence per number of territories in my sphere of influence. It's going to be an immediate booster of maybe like 30 of each. We'll then have a district that provides plus five influence and plus 10 stability. It's honestly not a great district. I don't know how this is going to go. Let's see. <laughs> As we move through at least into a fun modded culture, the Heian Japanese. Brilliant. And Major King Kong. Thank you so much. For the $2 super chat, Major King Kong says, good luck, gotta run in a minute. With, with your good luck and good vibes carrying us through, I reckon we can maybe just about do this. The crucial first step will be to get a really powerful new city online as soon as I move through. That's why I'm moving through now and not waiting till later. Wham yes, bam, man. thank you ma'am. City online. Brilliant. A new wonder could also be claimed, but I'm not going to let that bait me into getting that just yet. First and foremost, let's get a new city over here in the new world and likely name it after a super chat donor. And it's likely going to be heavily inspired by you, Major King Kong. Thank you again for supporting the stream. Uh, even a little $2 super chat goes a long way, my friend. I can promise you that much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hmm. This one looks good, but wait. Getting feudalism first will be very important. So I'm gonna hold off five turns to try and get feudalism unlocked. Um, my army that's headed this way to take this territory has been attacked and I don't know if it's a fight that I wanna take. First, let me see if I can win this. Oh, shoot. I was hoping to be able to backtrack to my city. Um, oh, I can see myself losing two fights here. Let's go for the quick military score grab here. Just to get a secured win on a fight. <laughs> Um, and then maybe just plump up our reinforcements in each city. Go, before we build anything else, let's get a sword and a, an archer. Yep. The city can't do it. So that's fine. <laughs> Wonders to claim. Okay. Good. We should definitely grab one of these. I could look to salvage a religion still with Notre Dame. Somebody has unfortunately taken Angor. What? Ugh. I'm gonna grab the Great Mosque. For the extra fame. Why not? Okay. This shitstorm of a fight. Just hold. We're just going to have to defend. Here I'm going for the defensive bonus of standing. Uh, trying to bait them in. Oh no, they blocked me. The plan was to bait them for a turn off the rivers. Uh, and have them do bad attacks and destroy them. It has actually worked, just not quite as intended. Um, I think the plan here will be to move off the flag. Secure the victory on the weaker unit with this swordsman. Yeah. And then hope that the others, hope that this one can defend itself. Either way, these guys aren't fighting the flag, so that's probably fine. For that one to defend, and for that one to defend as well. So it's just that one on the attack. It seems to have bugged out a little bit. Maybe if I jump into this fight, which 
seeing as this is more of an aggressive grab, I'm going to take the retreat on this one so that I can consolidate my forces back together. Don't forget, we forced the retreat up here, so it kind of balanced out a bit. And also it's put these units in a much better spot to defend us here next turn if Scheist really hits the fan. Although it's pretty bugged out at the minute. Might need to F9 just to reset it. Um, sometimes adjusting something like this can help. Sometimes going into a city and being like, hey, I want to build a district here can be helpful. Get that online fairly quickly because it's actually not terrible. Oh, looks like something has happened. Hello? Something? Yes, it did. Great. Uh, and it looks like something stupid happened. <laughs> Let's just hold the flag and carry that through another round where, by ending the turn, will hopefully allow me to reinforce and save the day. Nope, a retreating army can't reinforce. Yikes. Gonna have to wait another turn until they're no longer retreating. I don't think there'll be enough time for this unit to defend for that long. Let's see. It's a 1v1, at least. Because these guys have decided to hide in my city instead. <laughs> He's gonna die and lose the flag. No! Alright, not the end of the world, but cavemanism will definitely want to replenish what was lost and quickly grab a couple of units. Amazing. And through onto land rights. Plus 10 food per number of attached territories on cities is probably the one that I'll definitely go for, but do I look like a man who can afford that right now? No. Save my influence for feudalism once it gets done. Yikes. And the this swordsman could join this front line, I think. And these archers will go for another cheap, easy victory in this stupid 3v1 that they're going to let me play out over and over and over and over again. This time, they're even going to fight me for it. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, sir, what do we do now? They actually want to fight back. Well, I don't know. We're just archers. <laughs> Jeez. What do we do? I think we try and overwhelm them with numbers and accept that we're going to take a loss, potentially. Maybe even two losses at that rate. Yikes. <laughs> Imagine if all three of them perish. No. <laughs> Stop. Whew. Yeah, I'm strong. Yeah, I'm strong. Yikes. Don't worry, we head back up there all along. Everything's fine. <laughs> Marry off my cousins to start an alliance with France. It's the only way. Hey, Star Soldier streamer. Kicking it live on all platforms. Amazing. How are we doing? Doing good. Doing good. Loads of people tuning in on YouTube in particular today. Uh, welcome in everybody. We're at 72 likes. I set my like target at 75. I didn't think we'd make 100. I'm pretty stoked if we can make it to 75 likes even. We're already at 73. That is awesome. Twitch, I love you. I love you back. <laughs> I've not forgotten you, don't you worry. I got both chats open. I have both chats open today, I should say. Um, all right, let's merge these units. Thank you. And stand them on this beautiful glowing spot where they can kind of just stand for the rest of the game. Three of them even. Some rebels out of the Khmer. I'm assuming that's you. you are as no, that's the English. Is it my... Oh, the Muggles. Where are the Khmer? Jeepers. Madness. Absolute madness going on over here. Uh, three more turns and I can get my Glorious City online. So let me save up for that. Here we've got a 5v2. I will take that fight. How do you like Dusk and Dawn's culture? It's been difficult to experience it so far because I've been so focused on war. I haven't actually been able to, you know, build the districts that I want to build to properly experience it. I'll let you know once I actually have them built. So far, so good. Maybe slightly underpowered. But hard for me to say. Yes. Grimmos and Siberia. 
That's why it's extra difficult to get it right now. Yes, that is true. That is true. Swanstantin. Ron, love it. Followed on Twitch a few seconds ago. Thank you for following along. My hope here was to clear out this this very precious defendable tile and take it. Looks like um, I probably shouldn't have bothered though because it's just cost me dearly. Um, let's move to the high ground instead. Let's just move everybody up to the high ground, I think. Maybe we even say see you later to the flag. Eh. Uh, let's hold for a turn oh no there's reinforcements okay we're actually being a little bit overwhelmed here i need to put much more of a focus on building military units and maybe up speaking to the unique samurai that we've just picked up will give me a good chance to try out this culture a bit more actually If there ever was a silver lining to this mess, that's what it is. Oof. See, my swordsmen aren't terrible, but... They're... If they're outnumbered like this, and if we don't have home advantage... It's kind of like, why bother? I mean, I can jump in there and grab one military victory. But, yikes. Let's spend some money to make money. Grab some more precious defenders here. <laughs> and Thebes as well. Thebes is going to need it too. I think we get two of those bad boys. Maybe we also start healing where possible, rerouting extra resources down here too. It's probably a good idea to just pump everybody down and reset again up here in Memphis. Trained a lot of units in Memphis. We'll get three more. And sorry Dusk, but also just before you could even do anything else. Three more up here too. Yikes. It has to be done, but it is a yikes. What's that? What is that? Ah! They're parading through open fields like they own the place. Which they will soon if I'm not careful. War score falling out of favor for me a little bit here. Oh, friend! What are you doing? We're. We're allies, you fool! We were. No. They want Lich. Take it. I'm willing to curb my impatience and accept your demands. You will make this oh, they're gonna keep pushing. I was willing to seed one, but if it meant that trade could continue, but at that point, no, no, it's a hard no. Um, okay, we're two turns away from getting our fantastic new city online. I think that incentivizes me to try and hold for two turns, rather than go out and fight this madness. So let's bring uh, additional reinforcements from Thebes to support both of these cities. Defend these units. We now have around five in each city. That's enough to repel any incoming invasion, probably. Good. Non-aggression pact with the Georgians, please. I'm really looking for friends. I'll buy your ebony off you as well. Thanks, mate. <sighs> Why didn't these people just choose to be my friend? We could have conquered the new world together! You fools! Okay, one more turn for new city time. I'm gonna leave those defenders there. I do th still think that they provide more value there. Uh, and the aggressor looks to be wanting to move the other way. Let's prevent that from happening. We'll move on them and try and do a wee bit of a preemptive strike as they attempt to retreat. 
That'll generate a bit more war score for me. And it's still close enough to my city that they can kind of be considered defenders, I think. I wonder if I should take out these rebels too. Hmm. Nah. Okay, very good. We're in a position where we can at least hold this war off and win, if not, push the aggression a little bit here and claim that territory after all. Um, looks like we're going to have another Whomper of a fight in a, in a big old battlefield, so I'll reinforce with five units uh, along the back line. Should give me the strength to spin this into my favour. Might actually chuck the auto on. Let the AI at least deploy and take one round. And then if it looks like there are archers or something positioned in daft spots, I'll take them over. Change the religion. Yeah, another thing that I should do now. Unless, my only thought is, if we come out of this war so advantageous that we've taken over the holy land for, for this religion, then we'll probably take this one. Uh, oh my god, they actually won that fight because I failed to, to deploy in time. That's a sight for sore eyes. This kind of forces my hand a bit to sort of manually take this one now. I'll do it myself. Just to make sure that everybody knows what they're doing. <laughs> Clear the way for additional reinforcements melee troops to move to the front line archers coming in hopefully at the back block that unit maybe do the old high ground double team there to try and get that one out the way and that looks pretty good it looks pretty good after an unfortunate first loss i've taken control i've taken up the reins i say hey i don't stand aside uh let me help you you seem to be confused. We actually want to win this. No need to stab up at the high ground when we can come around here and take more of an even fight. This unit will of course be incentivized to come toward me. Is this round three of three? No. So I can afford to come over here and chop this guy. We then move into round three. This unit will likely move on to the flag. Oh my god, it didn't. It just went for a pass on one of my ranged units. Wow. I mean, fair enough, I guess. Maybe I would do the same. In a desperate pinch. Who knows? Go for the fast heal, because these units are all that we've got. And it's much cheaper to heal them immediately than build others. Might see if I can push that aggression again here. Whoa, a unicorn horn. Thousand bucks. Or just take it. Let's just take it and experiment on it. Get a little bit of science out of it too. I'll make like a cape or a cap or something out of it. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Leave him alone. He's a unicorn. Jeez. Here's my unique, the Samurai. Nine turns later. Jeez. However, everything's about to change now that I can get my super city online. Uh, this It's going to get five population if it starts here. However, actually, now that I think about it, it might be a good idea to give this city one extra territory to grab, because it can. So, let's place it in this one. Womp. It will start, of course, with all of the completed infrastructures from eras gone by, right? Making it an absolute powerhouse. Um, which means that I can go boom down there and then maybe ugh, 18 food there. Okay. Cool. Shoot out three population to get our estate. I think the answer is absolutely yes. Likely a couple of industrial districts around it and then a couple of sciencey ones back there maybe. I don't know. Either way, that's done and dusted. Let's attach this up and then immediately pump out one of those, send it to the front of the queue, 
actually expel the population to do it. And then let's go for the trifecta before anybody can ransack it. And again, smash down one of these unique districts. Now finally starting to get a chance to try the uh, this Japanese emblematic district, the Shinden Estate. Plus five influence and ten stability, and then per adjacent district, an additional influence and money. Plus the added benefits that I'm getting already from my civics and previous cultures. So it's a nice little uh, influence and stability booster, plus a little bit of cash money on the side, which I'm not mad at. I note that it coincides well with number of territories under my control. Um, the more I have under the control, the more I build. I build this, I build a couple of districts. We scale up a nice little benefit, maybe. Uh, I'll be interested to see how strong the Samurai is as well, and it looks like we're probably gonna get a chance to actually use it too, dare I say. <laughs> so be it. Let's attach up Mimosa and continue to prioritize building these districts, I think, over all else. Go on, get in there. Cool, 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 cool. One up there too. Why not, actually? Why not? Let's get them both done first. Lovely. Okay. Memphis has some that it would like to think about as well. I might queue those up. Um, that's cool. Uh, very quickly, I'm out of drink again. I've been talking so much. Such a long stream. I'm going to go for one more break and then I'll catch up on chat and we'll see how much more of this game we can do today. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't go away. I will be right back. I promise. Pinky swear. Right back. Don't go away. I promise. <laughs> Alrighty, um, <laughs> thank you for your patience. I am back and refreshed and revitalized and really noticing a whole lot of crisis points that are developing all over the world. Uh, a lack of trade will be hurting our empire a lot as well. <laughs> I also kind of agree with some old guy in Hawaii's sentiment. It's, it's, it's not enough, it's never enough. Screw economy of force, 10 per city. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. 
you're not wrong. Um, thanks also to, I, I, I'm pretty sure I, men I mentioned you at the time, but to be honest, it's been three hours and I can't quite remember. So if I didn't, I just want to say, uh, Qdries, thank you for using your Twitch Prime subscription over on Twitch. I appreciate that. Um, I'm pretty sure I thanked you, but just to make sure, um, I wanted to, <laughs> elevator noises, I wanted to make sure. Texans are always their own serve. They are a good defensive culture in the industrial era, no? <laughs> I might have to take them. I seem to remember something about horses. <laughs> Very Byzantine. Um, okay, you just stand there and hold. I think I'm happy to just end this turn, no? Hmm. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, shoot. And we won the war with the English. With 113 war score, we can even take something off them. <laughs> um, what have we got? Okay. What is that one? Can I take that? I, oh, no, that's not yours. Um, what have you got here? You, Naren? I mean, <laughs> yes. Uh, we could also get Satula. Satula looks like it has a lot of district. Hmm. Sure. And I'll take $21. And that's what you get for fighting someone you should never have fought. <laughs> great! Really great, actually. Because um, now cavemanism has more territory to claim. <laughs> Yoink. Couple of nice adjacent districts there too. Woof. Let's get all of these estates online. They don't have a scalable effect, so maybe it's not actually the smartest move of all time, but we'll see. Thebes. Oh, Thebes or oh, Thebes or oh, Thebes or oh, Thebes or oh, Thebes. Okay, fine. <laughs> More districts for you too. Do it. Fundamentalist values. We're not a bad shout. Think about it. Good idea to keep some units stationed on this outpost, I guess, to stop people from taking it off me. And we'll deal to these rebels as well. See ya. No need to manually resolve that one. We come out of that on top. And we thin out the herd a little bit as well from useless unpromoted units. <laughs> no offense to the useless unpromoted units watching this. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake! Well, as you emerge as the two great powers in the continent, I guess it was always going to happen. <laughs> we'll do fire adjusted them in a super pack, and this version is kind of crazy. Okay, good. I'm going to need some kind of crazy, I think. I'm going to need some kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, so we've just had war declared on us here. As we move toward the end of the medieval era. I think I'm going to have to wrap the stream here, everybody, uh, for today. Ugh. I will be streaming, I think, tomorrow and maybe actually even the day after. But I, I won't commit too much. Keep your eyes peeled for my tweets. Uh, is the easiest way to keep track. And then also, I'm getting back into the habit, even though it takes... Even though it can be a little bit frustrating and quite administrative at the start of the stream... Uh, I'm getting back into the habit of trying to put a separate YouTube event, uh, schedule a separate YouTube event before the stream starts, and then integrate it into the stream as it begins dual casting on Twitch. It seems to have worked every time I've done it. Um, and like I say, it's a bit administrative, but it, it does get also, uh, I think, 
maybe allow you to have a little bit more of a heads up because even though I post the schedule once a week on the stream on the community page and I post it on Twitter and stuff it's easy to miss it so I've also have been getting into the habit of doing that and providing that time allows I'll keep doing that sometimes it just doesn't though because like I say it's quite administrative and, and doesn't really provide a lot of benefit except for a little hey heads up the stream's coming in either an hour or maybe 10 hours or something uh, but like I say, do keep an eye out for that because I'll probably try and do that. Uh, we made it to 80 likes, which is a wonderful round number. <laughs> um, I'll just pop us onto the ending screen and just quickly talk to chat. Make sure that I didn't miss anything on Twitch, on YouTube, on otherwise. Uh, looks like we're all good on the Twitch front. Thank you very much, everybody who uh, tuned in over on Twitch today. A slightly quieter audience, but to be expected. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think also we had, like I say, uh, Q with the subscribe. And a few new followers too, so welcome if you followed along today. But really, uh, the, the love was on YouTube today. Uh, a couple of wee, uh, wee super chats from Major King Kong, from Devilish, twice, and also Dusk and Dawn, uh, with, with a similar amount, but in Dusk and, uh, Dusk and Shekels. <laughs> sure, in Dusk and Shekels. Why not? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and 81 likes. Nice. Great gaming stream. Can't believe we made it out of that start. Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised that we've made it this far, to be honest. And it looks like I'm in second at the moment as well, actually, just looking at the fame standings. So, definitely a game worth continuing. It's going to be a spicy one, not necessarily an easy one, either. Um, I'll save it as Just Had War. Stream influence only. And I think we'll keep trying with the influence only thing too. I think it's so far proved to be a pretty fun, fun challenge. Like I say, we do have the modded Texans in the industrial era. And at least one other modded culture as well. So, good stuff there. Um, and of course, a massive shout out to all of you in the chat. Right? I thank the Super Chatters because they financially help the stream go from something being not viable to me for being close to, if not maybe slightly more than viable for me depending on the day so i'm really grateful to them but of course i'm so grateful to everybody who just hung out and have a good time while we were here octopus star soldier the real dyl super chatted as well i remember apologies star soldier odlotoa huck in and out pete johnny johnny we've had some good ba uh, back and forth actually I appreciate your chats. Franklin and David tuned in at some point as well. Sorry I missed you back there where uh, we were talking to Toby. Devilish, of course, back toward the start of the stream. So many regulars, and I appreciate all of you. Some old guy in Hawaii. Dr. Train, King of Toto. The list goes on. Thank you, everybody, uh, and I'll see you likely around this time tomorrow, if everything allows. Take care, everyone. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.